my fugitive ape army turn on me? I'm their beloved leader and messiah! Oh, it's uh, probably because I abandoned them when I uncovered a massive alien conspiracy, befriended Donald Trump, decided to start my own country, went out to sea, lost my leg and eyeball, got turned into a gorilla through magic that regrew my leg and eyeball, and then declared myself Ocean God. Yeah, that's, that's probably why it was. Nerds! Welcome to the conversation. I'm Heil Russell. And I'm Joe Mudd. Hello. Hello, Joe. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, the conversation. But, Joe, I'm not going to talk about the mm-hmm. conversation right away. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Oh, go on. All right. Did you know, Joe, that the 2018 DK Vine Patreon stickers, the third series, <laughs> have arrived? <gasps> la di da Oh, I know. You're not having a fabulous dream right now, Joe. No, this is reality. <laughs> no need to check your bed for wet spots in the morning. Now, we've got fabulous complimentary stickers to give away to each and every person who supports us on Patreon this year. For as little as $1 a month. <laughs> hey. These include the DK Vine logo done in our Conversation Season 6 artwork style and upcoming site redesign. We've got uh, the cool surfing gorilla come mechanic, uh, Gnarly, who is uh, in no way supposed to resemble Funky Kong. Absolutely not. We've got the wacky, shamanistic, mask-clad, skeleton face. Uh, Similarities in appearance to Mumbo Jumbo are a complete coincidence. And the happy-go-lucky race steward and possible pirate artifact, Clockman. TT, you say? (laughs) What does the character from Nuts and Bolts have to do with Clockman? Yes, check these out and get yours today by going to dkvine.com slash Patreon. Uh, But that does actually provide a segue into this week's episode, Joe. Uh, Because originally, the lineup of character stickers was, uh, was going to be a little bit different this year, and... Instead of the character of Gnarly, the the surfing mechanic who is a gorilla, uh, we actually had selected a ponytail-wearing monkey who some say may share some superficial qualities with beloved Nintendo and Rare character Dixie Kong. And uh, we bumped her. <laughs> we, uh, we, we were going to have uh, somebody who, who kind of looked like Dixie Kong in our sticker collection this year. And, and, and then uh, they announced Tropical Freeze for the Switch uh, with, with the new funky mode. And we said, get out of here, you ponytail monkey. We don't want you this year. We don't want you. <laughs> the people want Aww. gnarly. I know. And uh, so it's just like Mario Kart Wii then, in that rather than picking Dixie, we get the funky. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, I, I I got to thinking about this because the uh, the stickers just arrived the other day from the printers, and uh, I was uh, you know sorting through all of them, and and I, I kind of realized, huh, th- th- this is exactly what always happens to poor Dixie. Uh, traditionally, <laughs> she's always been forgotten about, uh, removed from a cast for no reason. Or just completely ignored or shat upon by the marketing department. And uh, Hmm. that makes me wonder, am I part of the problem, Joe? Am I contributing? (laughs) Am I sexist? Am I I actually some sort of monster who who just adds ills to society without actually bettering it i might very well be and that really upsets me so as penance hashtag dixie (laughs) too as penance i wanted to uh to celebrate dixie to to explore her life and try to figure out whether i am a misogynist on a brand new (laughs) character witness episode and, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we have no females on staff, so, uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be the two of us, Joe, uh, but thanks for being oh. here this week, uh, 
I, uh... That's okay, I could put on a bit of lipstick if you want. That would be great. I'm already wearing lingerie. That's fu- that's, I, that's great. Um, if we, yeah, if we just get part of the way there so we seem less insensitive, uh, it's, <laughs> there, there's really no reason why nobody, uh, no, no, uh, women work for DK Vine other than it's never happened because only m- men have actually, like, actively sought to become staff members so maybe we should re- be recruiting joe i don't know but that that's yeah. that's that's for our staff meetings and and behind the scenes uh banter uh let's actually talk about dixie kong to the best of our ability uh yeah so for those who aren't familiar if you're if you just jumped on the conversation with this season uh the character witness episodes are not a behind-the-scenes journey of, like, let's say, the creation or development of the character. Uh, we, we get into that a little bit sometimes, but these are usually strictly from an in-universe standpoint. I, I am a bit of a, a continuity nerd. I'm a lore buff. I, I like figuring out uh, what what seem to be plot holes in canon and, and saying, no, this is actually why this is not a plot hole. And this actually leads to five more things that are interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I kind of thrive on that, and, and it's kind of annoying to everybody around me, but that, that's who I am, and that's why I like these character witness episodes, because it kind of celebrates the fictional story of, of these characters, and I, mm-hmm. I, I'm also a character, but I think everybody on DK Vine, the staff uh, and readership included, really, we, we prioritize characters over everything else. Uh, we we just love these creations primarily from Rare. You know, uh, there, there there's just something so fascinating about and and usually darkly humorous, but uh, some something just inherently grabbing about all of these characters. Uh, and you know, when when you look at the just the Kongs themselves and how interesting they are, I would be hard pressed to make an argument that uh against Dixie being the most interesting Kong. And mm-hmm. I say that as somebody who identifies Diddy Kong as his favorite Kong, but quite honestly, mm-hmm. I, I think Dixie uh has just as much going for her as Diddy and maybe a little bit more. But um Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh so anyway, we, we we'll be we'll be discussing a bit of real world events this time around because some of that does inform and even reflect the character struggles in the game world. Struggles, I say, of, of a character who's a young female monkey with implausibly superhuman human hair, um, hmm. but struggles nonetheless. So <laughs> struggles of the character who is easiest to play as in most instances. Well, yes, and that that's also a good point uh, that we'll we'll mm-hmm. be diving into. I think towards the end of the episode. Yeah, but uh, let's start before the games. Let's start with what we know about Dixie uh, and her life uh, before we first saw her in Donkey Kong Country Two. And you know, th- there's not yeah. much. There's not a lot, but uh, I mean, there usually isn't, and it's just usually what we we kind of. Um, mine from from very little it's like getting blood out of a stone but we we still find Mm. a way to do it um the thing that like comes to mind immediately when i think about like the the backstory of dixie is that she has the largest confirmed family out of the main kongs or really out of any of the Mm. kongs um it's because okay with donkey kong we know he's got cranky and wrinkly as grandparents who raised him as if he were their own son. Uh, we, we've got s- maybe Swanky Kong as his brother. That's really only fan conjecture, but you got to explain that pink gorilla from Donkey Kong Jr. math somehow. <laughs> and you beat me to it. <laughs> you know, honestly, like who would be a pink gorilla? Who? What? What Kong <laughs> would say, "I'm going to dye my hair pink"? It's got to be somebody who's got a sense of, of style. Gonna- and he's going through a bit of a scene kid stage yeah 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 i think i think that that could be swanky and i i just like the idea that donkey kong's brother (laughs) is this sleazy uh game show host (laughs) slash polyester clad like sideshow con man Uh, 
I, I think he's I in rehab at the moment, isn't he? He might be in rehab. We have, he's been in rehab for 20 years. Uh, poor Swanky. <laughs> Come back, Swanky. The video game world needs you. Now more than ever, we need Swanky Kong mm. in this time of confusion. Uh, anyway, Diddy does have parents, uh, and they've been sort of alluded to, but they've never been seen. Uh, they, they are the Maris of, of <laughs> the Kongs. But... Uh, Outside of that, we don't really know. We don't know Funky's family. We don't know Candy's family. And I know what some of you are thinking. Well, they're, they're all Kongs. They're all family. Kong is a clan name. It, it, it's like a tribe. They, they, there's only confirmed relations among some of them. Otherwise, you get into incest. And, you know, that, that's fine if you're Redneck Kong. But Redneck Kong, unfortunately, never became a canon character. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dixie, though... Oh my god, Dixie has family out the ass. And obviously she's got a little sister named Tiny. Uh, she's got a cousin. Or is it her sister? Or is it her daughter? It? From a teen <laughs> pregnancy. <laughs> I don't know. Tiny, my, Tiny's uh, looking more like Dixie's mother uh, in recent years. <laughs> uh, she's got a cousin, Chunky Kong. And Chunky's brother is, of course, Kitty Kong. And who is probably adopted because he looks nothing like the others and he actually resembles more of a gorilla than a monkey. And yes, I'm saying Chunky Kong is a monkey. I am saying it. <laughs> he is not a gorilla. He is a monkey. Look at his features compared to Diddy, Dixie, and Tiny and tell me, argue to my face that Chunky Kong is a gorilla. It's not going to happen. Because look, if Chunky was a gorilla, he wouldn't be Chunky. He would be petite. <laughs> <laughs> he's only chunky because he's a monkey. Sound reasoning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't don't argue me, people. Look, <laughs> K- Kotaku ran this bullshit article the other week, Joe. I don't know if you saw this. It was about uh, oh. they they pulled all this fan conjecture from the Donkey Kong wiki. People going rogue on Donkey Kong wiki, <laughs> talking about something called the Great Ape War. And, and, and Kotaku ran this article like, this is the insane Donkey Kong lore that you didn't know. The only thing is, it was completely <laughs> made up by people editing the Donkey Kong wiki. And also, there's some sort of satirical YouTube video. There is nothing... Okay, people, trust me. So, wait, if they're going up, if they're trying to look up inane bullshit made up by Donkey Kong fans, why the fuck didn't they come to DK Vine? Uh, because, for whatever reason, uh, it's easier to... I think somebody was just needed. Somebody who worked for Kotaku mm. needed content that day. It's a shame because I would love. I would absolutely love to see a, you know, like a mainstream clickbait article talk about prosthetic golfing fingers. Oh, uh, we'll be getting into <laughs> prosthetic golfing fingers, my friend. You know, we're going to get into that ah. this episode. Uh, no, I, I think you know that they, they have to write so many articles a week. I've never actually had a real job, so I don't really know how it works. <laughs> Uh, when when you're not just creating your own uh, website, but uh, I think uh, yeah, they need to fill content. They saw this YouTube video, which has gotten an implausible number of views, and they were like, "This is great! I'm gonna do an article about this." Uh, the only problem is there is no Great Ape War referenced in any Donkey Kong canon, in any of the games, in any of the literature. Uh, there is an art to our bullshit, Joe. We actually... Yeah, I was going to say, we we mentioned the Kremian Wars, which yes. are referenced in DKC3, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we actually yeah. look at what the games present us, and we, we spin our conjecture from there, but we never really like just make stuff up to make stuff up, because we we feel like there needs to be some grand backstory to this. We We actually do tried to be measured with with our uh ridiculous wankery um <laughs> so uh including of course chunky kong being a monkey uh yeah. now uh <laughs> K- kitty kong though is i i will cop to the fact i i fought this for a while i said he was a baboon or something K- kitty's a gorilla i i i have been won over on that mm. argument uh but here's what you might not know joe D- uh, Dixie actually what? has a third cousin that we've never seen. Yeah. Uh, now, this cousin, at least in the West, is named Dinky. 
And I know what you're, mm. you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you you people who have imported the Game Boy Color version of Donkey Kong <laughs> Land 3 from Japan are saying. Well, Dinky is what they call Kitty in Japan. Yes, it is. But... Oh, yeah. I totally imported that, by the way. I didn't just play it on an emulator. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. You know... I know DK Vine. We we were we've been famously like anti emulator f- f- for many for for the early years of our website. At this point, mm. I really can't be asked to fight it. It's just it's sometimes <laughs> it's the easiest way to to do, it, especially when Nintendo doesn't offer the stuff on their eShop. So you know what, mm. emulate away, people, but also try to support the the actual games from Nintendo when you can, or Rare, or you yeah, know, yeah. or all the companies. Of course, just, but you know, but, yeah. Well, Lots of people would pay good money for Mother 3 if they'd let us. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I would pay money for the Game Boy Color version of Donkey Kong Land 3 if they would do a translation for it and bring it out in the West. That's not going to happen, though. So, yeah. Um, But anyway. yeah. So there is a dinky, uh, at least in the West, but we will get into my reasoning for that in in a bit. Um, So, as far as... uh, Dixie's day-to-day life, we've never seen her her home. You know, obviously we've been in... Yes. Uh, sorry, when, when is Dinky mentioned again? I'm confused. Donkey Konga 2. Ah, right. Yes. <laughs> Just a mistranslated line then, I suppose. <laughs> yes, to... but but mistranslated <laughs> lines can be canon too. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that case, Bear Bear is canon then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. That's not, actually, that's not mistranslation. That's just a misinterpretation. That's fine. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There are it's degrees like, and if nuances. If I were in a video game and I was credited... Oops, sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. It, yeah, th- there, there, is, there's a difference between credit typos, I think, and in-game dialogue. And Dinky is basically in-game dialogue. So unless Dixie, like, hit her head on a bongo... Uh, that I, I think Dinky <laughs> can be confirmed to be a, another character. But uh, we'll save that for when we get to Dixie's involvement in Donkey Konga 2. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's now what, we, it's like if, if I were in a video game and I was credited as Mud, that wouldn't be my twin brother Mud Mud. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> that would be Joe Mud, whereas like, yeah, but as if my Japanese, no, the name of the Japanese version were Bob, and then someone accidentally called me Bob in the English version. Yeah, we would have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Then we would a have a relative name entirely. Name Bob Mud. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bob Mud. <laughs> <laughs> now you know we've we've been in Donkey Kong's many tree houses over the years. We've seen Cranky's numerous cabins. We we have a good idea of where Funky and Candy live. We we even saw Diddy's treehouse mm-hmm. in uh, the opening of Diddy Kong Racing DS. Uh, we we've never seen where Dixie actually lives. Uh, and I presume she and Diddy like live together now. Um, I, yeah, I don't. Well, my theory was that I've noticed both versions of Donkey Kong Country Three have no intro cutscene, whereas the Game Boy Advance ports added them for one and two. They didn't add them for three. Yes. And in the credits for Donkey Kong Country Three Game Boy Advance, you can see a brand new background of the inside of a treehouse that's never used anywhere else. So I like to think that was meant to be Dixie or Kitty's house, ah. and they never got around to using it. Perhaps. I like the way you think, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I well, also like to imagine that she's trailer trash. <laughs> Why? Because her name is Dixie? Yeah, plus Which, the way she's dressed as well. I mean, I, I don't know about the connotations in, in uh, the UK and why Rare named her Dixie, other than it was a, D, <laughs> a female D name. But, uh, you know, here here in the U.S., Dixie has a very specific connotation, and that is a, a name for the, the South. Uh, South. The South oh, yeah, is yeah. Dixie, uh, dating back to the Civil War. And then a lot of Southern women have had the name of, of Dixie. Uh, the actress Dixie Carter from Designing Women. Her name is Dixie. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I do like that Dixie is kind of... Um, I, I like the name Dixie. I think it works for her, and I like that it's kind of yeah. free of any uh, American-centric connotation. Sure, why not, Dixie? Um, I think it's one of the earliest um, Kong names that doesn't isn't uh, doesn't double as a description of that Kong. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm sure they 
because they they obviously went through like did at and and bullshit like that and i think they made the right choice just making it uniquely like hers and it also doesn't end with a y either it's it's just dixie no 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 attempt Mm -hmm. at having it uh end in a y which is something that most kongs uh after dixie didn't didn't bother with like you know lanky tiny chunky they all went for the the naming convention so yeah uh, that's a good point I didn't think of it that way i mean it still sounds like an e at the end which i think should be necessary that's why i don't like redneck kong or <laughs> kong or the ones from jungle beat <laughs> I like I like how blunt and stupid Redneck Kong is. I know I bring this up a lot on this <laughs> show, but I love that Rare Rare is the master of stupid, idiotic, imbecilic names that are just genius. When you yeah. even begin to analyze it, Mister Pants, Captain Bones, <laughs> like they're the laziest bullshit names. <laughs> uh, Redneck Kong definitely feel, fits uh, that. Uh, to a T. Mm. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to where, where how do we go on this uh, discussion? Oh, we were talking about Dixie trailers. Okay, where does she, where she lives? Um, so for some reason, I don't know. I've always rationalized that she lived at least in the early days around Barrel Cannon Canyon uh, in the original DKC. Mm. And there's no reason. I I think this. I I think it's because. Mm. It's on the second screen of the Congo jungle map in the original DKC. And that's far enough away from DK's treehouse and presumably where, where Diddy's family lived that uh, it would make sense why she wouldn't have met the other Kongs until after Donkey Kong land. <laughs> so all the way at the other end of the street. Yeah. 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 She's not the girl next door. She's the girl like around all, all the, the barrels that shoot you violently across the chasm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> she she'd seen them, but she, like she was kind of trapped in this loop, just being blasted <laughs> <laughs> through barrels, like, ah! screaming wildly, trying to get their attention, <laughs> passing out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I do. I I do like. Uh, I've, it's it's been so long since I played DKC three GBA. I will actually have to look that up. Uh, you say it's in the credits. Yeah. Yeah. So just look on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. I'll 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 do that. I I am intrigued. Um. Now. Okay. So. At some point in the summer or early autumn between Donkey Kong Land and Donkey Kong Country Two, and this is 1995, uh, Diddy mm-hmm. Kong met Dixie Kong, and the two became a boyfriend and girlfriend, or whatever passes for boyfriend and girlfriend when you're 12 years old. Uh, now, Diddy, of course, by that point, had a reputation as a brave, heroic sidekick of Donkey Kong, uh, who, who twice rescued the Banana Horde from the clutches of the Kremlins. And this must have been very appealing for Dixie, because from the start, from her very first introduction uh, in the story, in the instruction manual for DKC2... Uh, Dixie has been portrayed as somebody with a thirst for adventure, a uh, bit fearless, and kind of reckless even, uh, much more so than the, any of the other Kongs, including Donkey and Diddy. Um, mm. Diddy likes adventure, but he he always seemed to crave like becoming a video game hero first and foremost, like... The prestige, the title was important to him. The the recognition, the mm-hmm. notoriety. Uh, and, and when faced with danger and peril, especially in those early years, he seemed to be a bit trepidatious, a little bit uneasy. And he he like he he mustered the courage and he did it. But it's not like he really enjoyed uh, getting violently chucked into a barrel by the Kremlins or anything. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it seemed to me like Donkey Kong was too lazy to like want to go adventuring. Yeah, every like time Don- he has done so, it's because something he loved was at stake, be it his yeah. family or the bananas. Like we know, Donkey and Diddy have gone on many like quote unquote adventures that we've never seen, but I, I've always equated that more with <laughs> leisurely strolls through the forest or just blatant ex- like blatant excuses for vacations. Like let's go on an adventure. 
to this theme park over here. Went, Let's go. Went to on a strip a, club. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Diddy, we're going on an adventure to uh, <laughs> to a, I, I don't know what would be a good strip club name on Donkey Kong Island. Um, Clam City. <laughs> the thing is, that's not in our show notes, people. Joe just had that at the ready for the for the moment I would one day ask for it uh <laughs> well, there's like five me verse posts that made that joke but yeah oh really rest okay. in peace me verse yeah oh rest in peace me verse yes oh <laughs> um <laughs> so oh uh, yeah but yeah they're they're uh, from, from what i gather they're donkey and diddy donkey in particular is a lazy asshole uh diddy mm. is, is not so much lazy but he basically wants uh, consequence risk free adventure dixie she she like lives for like peril she is mm. she is somebody who i, I don't want to say gets off because i don't want to sexualize things that that was the last episode <laughs> i did with nick that was full of smut this this episode is, is going to be clean besides besides for clam city um but i don't know dixie seems to just love like adventure and, and proving that not only can she like hang with with the boys with, with with the men but that she's better than they are at at being a hero at, at being somebody who can brave the dangers of the jungle so mm. that's I, I can imagine like diddy that notoriety here's a kid hero who just took on the kremlins twice and then dixie would be like yeah i want to get with him because not not <laughs> just for he's appealing to me he's attractive but also then i can go on adventures too. <laughs> so <laughs> the lifestyle would appeal to her i would imagine um mm. now nintendo and rare have sometimes alternated between outright saying that Diddy and Dixie are a romantic couple, boyfriend and girlfriend, and leaving it more oh. ambiguous. Um, but by and large, I think they've been kind of upfront with it, enough that it's something that uh, we fans can confidently say, yeah, these two, they're, uh, they're an item. At this point, they'd be fucking... Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, not, not until they're much older, but I, I'm, I'm saying with the understanding that maybe Diddy and Dixie have aged chronologically and they're adults, you know, but, um, yeah. That's I, a very I, good I, point. I mean, the only time since that we've seen them both like playable in a platforming game together is Tropical Freeze. And then there was no indication at all, as far as I know, that they were in, entwined. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's kind of just left unsaid. A lot of times when you see Dixie reference, she'll be referenced as Diddy's girlfriend. So, mm. and, and that's been in games too. So we can confidently say, yeah, I mean, it, it's canon. And it, it's it's less ambiguous than anything that goes on with the Mario cast, you know. It, it, yeah. I think everybody assumes Mario and Peach are a couple, but the games really do skirt around it. Besides, like, Peach sometimes giving him a kiss on the cheek. They're, it's really the most uh, asexual, like... Uh, I don't want to give Mario Odyssey spoilers, but... Oh! That that game does kind of give suggestions that they are... That there is something between them. See, see you have a Switch, Joe, and I do not have a Switch yet. <laughs> uh, which I really need to get around to getting a Switch. Ukulele's out for it. Obviously, we got mm. Tropical Freeze coming out. The Rabbids shit. Um... Yeah, I need to. I need to get. I need. I need to make the financial splurge. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, mm. times be tough. So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I am living out on mm. the street right now. Unfortunately, uh, I, oh. I I am the one living in a barrel cannon, being shot violently <laughs> to and fro. <laughs> uh, but I mean, okay, so maybe maybe like we'll say Luigi and Daisy or. Um, even like Link and Zelda throughout the years, there's just so much like, mm. just like heatless couples. And I'm not saying like Diddy and Dixie are hot and heavy. It's not like you see them together and you're like, oh, this is so romantic. But I like that one, they basically just confirmed, yeah, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. And two, it's never a big deal. Like it's, it's, they're just, mm. they're just, they just exist and they seem to get along well. And it's, it's, 
it doesn't inform either one of their characters and it never informs Dixie's character, which I really love mm. that she's not just Dee Dee's girlfriend. She's still her own independent character who can headline her own game uh, without yeah, it, without right. like it revol- revolving around Diddy. And you can't really say the same about Peach. I know Peach had like <laughs> one game on the Game Boy Advance, but Peach is still very much defined by being... It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. was it on a DS? I it was, it was Super Princess Peach. Yeah, it, it was that time period where the Game Boy Advance was out and the DS was new or coming out. So everything mm. gets blurry because there was that overlap, and I can't remember a lot of times unless it's a Donkey Kong game whether something <laughs> was for the, the GBA or for the DS. Um, mm. But yes, uh, even in Odyssey, Peach is very much defined by like her relationship to Mario or, or her relationship to Bowser even. And, uh, I I like that Dixie is never a damsel in distress. She's never somebody who needs rescuing and she's definitely not just Diddy's girlfriend. So even, um, Candy Kong really, even though Candy Kong's more of a kind of joke character. Yeah. Still like, she's not really seen as Donkey Kong's girlfriend so much as the, innuendo phil jessica rabbit of the island right she she's she's a uh, furry tits that's basically yeah. candy kong which i mean candy kong again she's she's pe- again people people have issues with candy kong and i i see it for good reason i'm 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 not certain i don't have issues with candy kong but candy <laughs> kong is a, a piss take of a character and yeah. the, the only problem with Candy Kong is I think Funky Kong started out as a piss take of a character and Funky Kong was allowed to grow into something a bit more complex and interesting and mm. Candy Kong never really was. <laughs> and that's kind of <laughs> no. me capped her going forward. Um, it would be interesting to bring back Candy Kong. I, I think I've brought this up before. If I haven't, it's I brought it up in my head, like in the shower when I'm thinking about like, Talking points on the conversation this week. I, I know I brought up mm-hmm. it would be interesting to redeem Candy Kong's character and tr- make her interesting. <laughs> it would be a tall order, but I think it could be done. But yeah, we'll save that for character witness Candy Kong uh, many, many, many years from now. So anyway, uh, let, let's get into Donkey Kong Country 2. Her first appearance... Uh, I guess technically, you know, she she is Diddy's sidekick in the game, but they don't really play up the whole sidekick dynamic. Just it's just the sheer technicality that she's the sidekick by being the second uh, Kong, the second player. But mm. uh, Dixie Kong, you know, they they did their best in this game to make the characters balanced. Like there are advantages to Diddy Kong, absolutely. There are advantages to Dixie Kong. I still think most players prefer playing as Dixie Kong in Donkey Kong Country 2 uh, hmm. because you can't beat the helicopter spin. It's just <laughs> the the uh, the ability to float gingerly through a stage at your leisure. Uh, it, it really it really yeah. does I, make I can helicopter too, but it doesn't really get me anywhere to be honest. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> took, took me a second to visualize what you're referring to. Um, Sorry. Yeah, why didn't Diddy just pull that? I mean, he's not wearing pants. <laughs> I'd like to see if he could float with it. Sounds uh, like Lanky would do. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what uh what you refer to as hat Kong. That would be his his move because he just wears a hat, no pants, no shirt. <laughs> That's how he commutes to work, because in Big Ape City. Oh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think by and large, uh, probably probably by like a seventy to thirty ratio, people prefer Dixie Kong in DKC two because the, the, it's she's so much fun to play as. And granted, like yeah. when I played Donkey Kong Country two, I I would play as Diddy because. In the original Donkey Kong Country, I, I played with my friend Elliot, um, oft mm-hmm. referenced on the show, and he played as Donkey Kong and I played as Diddy Kong, just because he 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 had the physical proportions of a gorilla and I I liked the monkey. And then when DKC two <laughs> came about, I played as Diddy Kong. I continued to play as Diddy Kong and he took over Dixie. Um, so like I 
I'm actually probably better with the game with Diddy Kong, but I, I will admit it, it's sheer joy to play as Dixie Kong. And she helicopter spins. I mean, that is her big thing. Like, it, it's, Diddy utilizes uh, a couple different things. He, you know, he, he holds a barrel in front of him, but he also, in this game, uses his tail to hang from things. Dixie uses her hair for basically everything. She picks up barrels with her mm. hair. Barrels and treasure, treasure chest and uh, certain enemies. She can hang from hooks with her hair. She, uh, of course, uh, wafts or, or helicopter spins through the air with her hair. <laughs> and she can whack enemies with her hair. So, um, the, the hair... It, it's the more you think about it, the weirder it is that like there is a, a monkey with a ponytail, but it was really just great design that they, they created this character, the, this, mm. this girl monkey character. And they, they, they found a way to incorporate her design. So in tune with the gameplay and, um, the the thing about Dixie, I think from a design point of view, mm-hmm. it's a bit hard to wrap around the fact that not only is it hard prehensile enough to lift things, but it's also like limp enough to flap in the air. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it may have inspired the physics involved for the breasts in Dorian and Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> like subconsciously, I might have been thinking of Dixie's hair when I thought of ladies that can lift things with her, their breasts. <laughs> well, I'm glad Dixie has uh, contributed so positively to the arts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe so, I think um, Wrinkly Kong's move. <laughs> Good lord, Dixie! I I don't know what she uses in her hair. Like I I imagine it, it's a certain type of hairspray. Or shampoo, like banana shampoo or something. She just washes her hair in banana goop. I don't know. But I, yeah, it, <laughs> on the surface, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. But for some reason, within the logic of the game world, it's it just perfectly, okay, yeah, sure. Like, the thing yeah. that always gets me is it, the, the whole is like spinning and, and like floating through the air. Like, she doesn't fly w- with, with her hair in this game, but she, she just kind of gradually descends with it for some reason that doesn't bother me i'm like mm. I, I can get on board with that the thing that really bugs me out is the image of her picking things up with her hair or hair and then holding it above her head i do not understand <laughs> how that works in the slightest and i i think w- when i was prepping this episode i i tried to like visualize like get inside the game world and think how would this work and the best i can do is she uses the barrels and whatnot as kind of like curlers and, and she wraps her hair so tightly <laughs> that it just keeps it perfectly in place until she can jostle her head violently enough that she flings it forward. So that begs the question, does, yeah. does she have neck problems or will she develop <laughs> severe spinal issues later in life? I can't imagine she won't. I don't um, know. I I, I really hope not. So <laughs> I I really hope they they introduce a chiropractor Kong at some point because I do worry about the the well being of our protagonist in these games, especially Dixie. She does not take good mm-hmm. care of herself. You know, you're you're supposed to lift things by by bending at the knees. You know, you're not supposed to bend over when you pick up something heavy. So <laughs> I I can't imagine well, picking that- something up with your head uh, is any better. <laughs> Have you seen that lady in arms that's got two fists coming out of her hair? No, my philosophical yeah, issue. My philosophical issues with arms are well documented because they could have put Lanky Kong in the game as a secret character and they did <laughs> not. So I refuse to it's acknowledge not too late. arms. It is not too late, but they're not going to do it. So I refuse to acknowledge arms uh, as yeah. a thing that exists. It, it, it is a non-entity to me. It 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 is a rumored Nintendo Switch game that doesn't actually <laughs> exist. It's like the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. Doesn't mean it's actually there. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I like how, like, Dixie is is 
is so eager to accompany Diddy on this adventure. And, you know, she, she's kind of new to, to the group at this point. So she, I don't think she wants to admit that she's thrilled that Donkey Kong has been kidnapped. Um, but I <laughs> think based on her portrayal in later games, she must be secretly thrilled. Like, she doesn't know Donkey Kong well enough at this point that, like, he he's like he means that much to her besides mm-hmm. being you know the future protector of the island blah 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 but yeah there's not there's not much of a personal relationship there yet so and in the instruction she just book, wants to go on an adventure yeah in the instruction book yeah. it's it's even like kind kind of put out there that she's she's kind of taken up all of diddy's time like diddy diddy's just been off with dixie all, for like the last couple of months <laughs> he has no time for the rest of the kongs donkey included so you know I, I i think at this point she doesn't really know any of the kongs except for diddy diddy's kind of her mm-hmm. in with the group and so if donkey's kidnapped well she has not much personal investment there but good lord she wants to go on this adventure like th- this this is this is a catnip to her and uh <laughs> so yeah she she accompanies diddy of course they uh diddy becomes a video game hero uh dixie doesn't get any uh honorifics uh in this game but she uh she does definitely prove herself uh more than capable and she commits accidental genocide with diddy kong uh which <laughs> as, as far as your first adventure going, accidentally obliterating an island and most of the uh, the species, the race that lives on this island, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of kind of a black and mark. For a second, second adventure does the same thing again. <laughs> does the exact same thing again. For more on that, see on game, Joe though. and I uh, about a year and a half ago on the Donkey Kong Land 2 Spotlight episode of The Conversation, it's not annoying at all. And and I definitely do not play no. the same song for uh, several hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, uh, Donkey Kong Land 2, I, we're not going to belabor Donkey Kong Land 2 too much because there, there's not much to really um, get into other than our absurd fan. And again, we did a whole Spotlight episode about it. But... um. Yeah, she, she accompanies Diddy again in, in Donkey Kong Land 2, and mm. Crocodile Isle is is destroyed much more thoroughly this time around. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah that, that was her second appearance. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 3! <laughs> yeah! yeah! So this is the, obviously... Game. Yeah, this is obviously the big one, and this, this is Dixie's uh, moment in the sun. Um, the uh, the Apart plot from of this... the adverts where they censored her name out of the adverts. Yeah, they said it yeah. Kitty Kong. Yeah, yeah. So Kitty Kong. So yeah. Donkey Kong Country Three, though, I like that the story. So so Dixie and and Diddy are still obviously an item, but at this point, like the relationship isn't new. They they've been together for over a year at this point, and I like how. At this point, Diddy is hanging out more with Donkey again. Like, like, okay, I've got a girlfriend. That's cool. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on vacation with Donkey Kong. We're, we're going on vacation together to the Northern Hemisphere without my girlfriend. Which, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, got b- b- a, a boy's excursion, uh, uh, a gentleman's retreat. There's nothing wrong with that. Um. And it's probably good for them that that they left Dixie behind because she was the one who bailed their asses out of out of this whole nightmare where they were, of yeah. course, in their sleep, uh, abducted by K. Roll and used as the uh, cerebral brain power of his uh, his his puppet. They just went on a mental and, health break, you know. We've all been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 then they became the the despotic uh, new Kremlin king chaos, or at least the <laughs> brain of chaos, uh, c- secretly controlled by K. Rule behind the scenes. So spoilers, yeah. Whoops, yeah. That that's yeah. K. Rule's <laughs> in the game. He's not actually dead, people. Uh, so Dixie, um, they, they just go missing. And then Dixie, of course, has to travel to the northern hemisphere to find them. And of course, is then saddled with Kitty Kong. Now, if it were up to Dixie, 
she would have just done this entire adventure by herself. She she wasn't going to partner with any Kong. She didn't ask Tiny to, to go with her or anything. And we know at this point, Tiny was at least somewhat involved in the plot of Donkey Kong Country 2. Because in the Game Boy Advance remake, uh, there was a mini game where Tiny was abducted by the Kremlins. And you had to rescue her in the gyrocopter. Um <laughs> so so tiny tiny actually did have a small role in the plot of Donkey Kong Country 2 but uh Dixie didn't ask her little sister to go with her she was just going to to find uh Donkey and Diddy by herself so she she traveled to the northern hemisphere and then it was there that Funky Kong said for for no reason hey I've got your cousin here with me take him with you <laughs> I, I, I know this is this is a perennial question among Donkey Kong fans, but what the hell was Kitty Kong doing with Funky? Why? Why? <laughs> like, I, I guess Funky was just prepared, and he was like, "Well, Dixie can't do this alone. I know she's going to try to do it alone. She can't do it alone. I'm certainly not going to go adventuring with her because that I'm not going to be bothered with that for another. He's too uh, stoned. Yeah, for another 22 years, I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> so yeah he was so like well the I'll best send the op- baby that's the responsible yeah, thing the to best do. <laughs> option is your fucking toddler of a cousin granted he is a gorilla <laughs> but he's still a baby in in like uh a onesie and in, in pajamas um so the the question is did funky go to kitty's parents and say Hey, I'm a responsible businessman. I got this new boat store. Let me babysit for no reason. Or did he just abduct Kitty from his crib? These are the questions that need to be asked and and may put Funky behind bars uh, if they are solved. But uh, well, so- it was Funky's job to babysit, but then he just got too stoned. And was luckily, he was able to detect that he wasn't able to function as a competent babysitter so he quickly handed him over to dixie so he could yeah. proceed to enjoy some ketamine <laughs> right because yeah yeah that's at the very least funky is is self-aware and cognizant <laughs> enough of the fact that he is he's totally irresponsible that he can't he cannot <laughs> actually successfully watch over another living creature without accidentally, I don't know, baking them into his brownies. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he just, he couldn't, he wasn't playable because he was in a K-hole for most of DKC3. <laughs> <laughs> K-hole sounds like where you would have found a banana bird. Like, that sounds like one of the banana bird <laughs> caves uh, that you would have, will find with the gyrocopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I know, I know Nick and I brought this up on our exhaustive four-part spotlight series for the Donkey Kong Country 3 uh, 20th anniversary, but uh, Dixie's game, her solo outing with Donkey Kong Country 3, is very much kind of like finely tuned to this, um, I guess, like, adolescent girl type game like dkc3 is not an overtly girly game it, it's a game that appeals to mm. to all genders but there there is this kind of babysitter's club aspect to it where the double trouble probably refers to her having to babysit kitty kong her sidekick in the game is mm. very much a fucking baby and um i always thought it was just because you could play as two characters in the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah. her and kitty but that's not different to any of the other games so i really don't understand where double trouble comes from right it's and it's 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 not Donkey Kong country 3 double trouble it's dixie kong's double trouble mm. um so it's, yeah it, it was like triple trouble yeah i mean you, you've got okay oh, so you got like what the kremlins and kitty kong that's double trouble or is it the fact that yeah Baird K. Rulingstein or, or Chaos, are, are they the double trouble? But but we don't really know about Baron K. Rulingstein, and, and then Chaos isn't really a threat when you find out about Baron K. Rulingstein. So so is is it is it the fact that the Kongs are missing and then there's also Kremlins? Because you don't know that the Kremlins are responsible for the Kongs being missing, although, you know, the obviously plot of the they game are. is kind of a non-entity, really, isn't it? What's that? <laughs> like 
the plot of the game is a non-entity, really. Like I said earlier about there being no cutscene added to the Game Boy Advance version. It's like they just went, um, oh, I give up. I just left it. <laughs> the, the, the plot is definitely the, the least clear cut of the original games. It's very much mm. like, because, because there is the big reveal with K. Rule at the end. So I think, they, they, there's so much ambiguous about the game. Like the, the game is presented as a mystery. Again, uh, it's, it's, it sort of reminds me of like the Babysitters Club books, mm. which were like mystery books marketed towards like, um, adolescent girls or, or maybe like Nancy Drew or something. It, it it's, it's a mystery, uh, w- with this female protagonist. And the, the problem is for a 2D video game platformer on the Super Nintendo, you usually had much, much more basic plots than than whatever Donkey Kong Country Three is presenting. But I, I like Donkey Kong Country Three. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's basically just your friends are kidnapped yet again, but they they hid that, they obscured that enough with a lot of random bullshit, uh, and uh, I, I think it, it works well for Dixie Kong's solo game because she is the Kong who likes adventure. And I think that that also mm. extends to mysteries and, and solving a grand, almost conspiracy. I, I think it works well for Dixie's game. And also the fact that there's 13 fucking bears in the game. There's there's this this <laughs> teddy bear aspect to it. So mm. it, it, it's, it's very much like, I, I know this is a point we have definitely belabored in the past, but it seems like for the original three DKC games, each game is sort of suited for the aesthetics and spirit of its protagonist. Donkey Kong Country is, is a jungle adventure. It, it, it's it's kind of like a, a rollicking serial, an Indiana Jones type experience mixed with, you know, old National Geographic documentaries or something, <laughs> or a BBC nature documentary. Um, <laughs> Donkey Kong Country 2, it's the Goonies, it's a pirate adventure, it's swashbuckling, it, it's it's what you would expect for a character who is partially based um, on Short Round from Temple of Doom, Short you know? Round. Yeah, yeah who, who the actor was also in the Goonies. Uh, and then Donkey Kong Country 3, <laughs> it's it's the Babysitter's Club, it's, um, it, it's you know, I don't know, teddy bear's picnic. It's 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 all sorts of things. Um, mm. But it, it it's suited for uh, Dixie Kong. Anyway, so Dixie becomes a video game hero um, in Donkey Kong Country Three, even though that's not actually a plot point in the game. She she does collect all of the hero coins in the game. Yes, hero coins. I refuse to acknowledge them as DK coins. Uh, they are hero <laughs> coins till the bitter fucking end. She collects all the hero coins. Uh, she she does. She meets the same criteria as Diddy does in Donkey Kong Country 2. So even though she's not concerned about becoming a video game hero, uh, she does meet the same standards. So she graduates from sidekick to to full fledged. Uh, I I can I can start my own video game from this point on character and um <laughs> yeah and then she goes on to star in zero video games one she's in one on. she's in she's in one, one game it, it it's <laughs> it's donkey on land three but it's still yeah. another game so yeah, yeah hey you know don't don't spit in the face of donkey kong land three true <laughs> <laughs> no uh be- before we get to donkey kong land three though um I, 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 you know, there, there's, there's, there's more I want to talk about with DKC three, even though I feel like we're just, you know, treating over the same ground that we, we talked about, uh, back in the spotlight episodes, uh, and probably let's be honest. I mean, we're, we're 250 episodes deep in this, in this podcast. So I'm mm-hmm. sure we, we're just repeating many points again and again and again. Uh, yeah, but uh so so dixie like she not only like makes acquaintances with all of these these brothers bear but she also liberates the banana birds so dixie in in a way she absolves herself much more so than diddy did 
from the accidental <laughs> genocide of Donkey Kong Country 2. So, okay, she, she was, she was responsible for the accidental near eradication of the Kremlins. Yes. <laughs> But she then saves the banana birds from a similar fate at the hands of the the maniacal, uh, evil K. Rule. So, and, yeah, and really, see, being a female video game hero, she can multitask. She can, mul- yeah, she she's a lot more. <laughs> ca- and look, I can say this as a as a as a man married to a woman. My wife is a lot more capable than I am. I mean, like there are <laughs> stereotypes about us men. And a lot of times they are true. Uh, there, there's a certain sense of uh, arrested development, I think, w- with uh, most men where w- we kind of fall apart when we're f- we're faced with too much. Where my wife is very much, I'm just going to take charge and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do all of this and I'm going to make it look easy and simple. And um, Dixie is definitely uh, much in the same way. So yes, I'm saying... I fell in love with my wife because she reminded me of Dixie Kong. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll say it. Sure. Because I know there's an episode of me where I say the ideal mate is Dixie Kong. I know because people have taken my voice from that episode and, and they've had fun with that clip. So, uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> the ideal mate is human Dixie Kong. If if you're a heterosexual male or I guess a, a lesbian woman, even though Dixie Kong's not a lesbian, okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, DKC three. She becomes a video game hero, and then she parlays that success in her only other solo outing. Uh, about eleven months later, Donkey Kong Land three, nineteen ninety seven, October. Um, now Donkey Kong Land three, it, it's interesting and. Good Lord, we just had a spotlight for this a few months ago. David mm. Lynch and I did it. So, <laughs> the plot of Donkey Kong Land 3, it definitely mirrors, in a certain way, and I don't think this was intentional, the marketing campaign for Donkey Kong Country 3 from Nintendo. So, we, we've already uh, talked about this, we've alluded to it. When Donkey Kong Country 3 came out, it, it was Dixie's big starring role, but Nintendo... Of America, at least. I'm not sure how they marketed it around the world. I I haven't really seen many international <laughs> commercials for it. Um, Joe, maybe you could shed some light on how they treated it uh, o- um, across the pond. But um, well, I would have been five at the time, so I can't really remember. That's no excuse. <laughs> Look, that's no excuse. I remember when <laughs> I was five. I remember. Um, I remember kindergarten. I remember. Um, wanting to be a game show host like Swanky, I shit you not. That was what I wanted <laughs> to do for my career at the time. I thought, what what would be a good career for me? Heil Russell, game show host. And to be <laughs> fair, I am hosting a show about games. So technically, yeah, close I I fulfilled my my uh, idealistic goals at five years old. Uh, but. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah, here here in the states at least, Nintendo of America, they uh, they promoted Donkey Kong Country Three by hyping Kitty Kong and hiding the fact that the star of the game was Dixie. And mm-hmm. and looking back on it, they didn't really promote Dixie Kong all that much with DKC Two as well. But it's it's more egregious of an error when this is Dixie's game. This is like Dixie was popular enough. And I know she was really popular with DKC2 because just just reading Nintendo Power, the amount of fan mail, the the, the fan art that came in for her, and mm. you really sense she did strike a chord not only with with girls because here's this strong female that doesn't need a rescuing, that's fully capable, she loves adventuring, mm. and we're not going to hide the fact that she's a uh, female either, like we did with uh, Samus in the original Metroid. No, yeah, she, and she's... L- Lara Croft wouldn't be along for another year yet. <laughs> yeah, and let's be honest, yeah, we, we can reboot Tomb Raider all we want, we can we can make her more progressive. <laughs> they, they basically, okay, Lara Croft initially was Candy Kong. She was basically <laughs> just a pair of tits in a video game used to give teenage boys a boner very very hideous <laughs> polygonal breast but that's all she was that's all she was there for you can say oh yeah but she was she was great with female empowerment my no she was there to masturbate she, she but, 
they they improved Laura Croft. Yes, yes. The the modern Tomb Raider games they they've reduced the breast size to a more realistic proportion. They've they've made her like they they've given her pathos and whatnot. Okay, great. But initially, she was there so people could do really shitty uh, photo manipulations of her being topless. And then, and then people could ejaculate on their computer monitors in 1998 or whatever. <laughs> Nude Raider, look it up. It happened. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, and and that that's another good point about Dixie, though, is she she was a female protagonist that was not in any way sexualized, and and because she she was not she not was officially a, anyway. Not if I mean I'm sure. Of, People have their kinks. People have fetishes. As like, oh yeah, underage monkeys. That's my, that's my, that's my thing, and that's what gets my juices flowing. <laughs> Those people are sick and disturbing, but they probably have psychological conditions, and they can't help it. So long as they get the therapy needed, and they don't become a, a detriment to society, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm not passing judgment here. <laughs> well, I, I pass a lot of judgment. <laughs> With with my uh, Tomb Raider rant, but um, <laughs> no, I mean by by the nature of what she was, a a underage little girl monkey, you couldn't really sexualize Dixie Kong unless you really tried, and I think that was what was was, I think so successful about her character is because up until that point, you really didn't see too much in the way in video games of female protagonist who who won weren't there to titillize boys and, and the the men and, and you know as video game as the industry you know aged and and gamers aged with it you know then college age males and then adults mm. and um she was just a really cool character who was fun to play as and was yeah. was just as she was she was i mean she was basically just a very well thought out and interesting character. And, and so rare was like, yeah, we, it's not fair to Dixie if we make a sequel. And great. This was a new team that took over from the, the, the male Sutherland, you know, um, crew, mm. but you know, they, they said, you know, let's, let's just keep it going. Let's give Dixie the starring role in this game. And I, I applaud them for it because I mean that was that was a bold move um, back in 1996. It would be a, almost a bold move now, considering Dixie yeah. hasn't been in a starring game since '97. So um, she, she was she was popular, and and that was why they they felt like they could do that. But Nintendo of America said, "Well, oh, I mean, m- most of our audience they're they're boys. We can't market a game starring a girl." You know, not not mm. wearing like futuristic space armor who, that hides <laughs> the fact that she's a girl. So let's let's focus on this Kitty Kong character because what do what do like edgy like uh, males of the '90s love more than a fucking toddler? So <laughs> the commercial for Donkey Kong Country Three, of course. So Donkey Kong Country Three, starring Kitty Kong. <coughs> oh, that god, that mm-hmm. hurts my throat. And it's like you, you see the game logo and it's Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, and you're like, "You son of a bitch!" Like, what is wrong with you? And even the commercial, like they they had the uh, the the motorcycle riding gorilla who I think was <laughs> like they they were, they were that in the print ad. They were kind of like alluding to now this is Kitty Kong that this badass leather wearing like biker. Ignore the fact that in the screenshots there's a there's a there's a little baby who's who's shitting in his pants. Ignore that. <laughs> this is Kitty Kong, and uh, it coming was so, soon. It was Yoshi's so Island, starring Vin Diesel. <laughs> it was so fucking stupid because, mm. as somebody who remembers what it was like when they were five years old, let alone when they were twelve or thirteen. I had no problem playing as Dixie Kong. Uh, mm. I I love Dixie Kong. I I I had no like um, I I had no hangups about oh I, this this is awesome. Dixie Kong's the star of this game. Um, 
another example, like when I when I was a younger lad and I collected Ninja Turtle mm. action figures, you know, I I liked I wanted April uh April O'Neil as a as an action figure. April O'Neil, the the reporter from the Ninja Turtles cartoon, not the porn star of the same <laughs> name. Uh, don't do a Google search, people. Mm. Um, but <laughs> I, I wanted April yeah, O'Neil and. She was always short. As a child, I was very practical minded and I just thought, oh great, I can play as the one that can fly. That's handy. <laughs> right. But, you know, the, the toy industry, they always short packed the, the female characters because they thought boys don't want them. And for me, at least, that was, you know, nothing further from the truth. I wanted the complete cast. And it was, it was always frustrating. And that's something that they've only, like, really recently resolved with. I mean, the fucking Last Jedi, you can actually walk into a toy store and find the star of the movie, Rey, on, on mm. you know, s- hanging from the pegs. But when The Force Awakens came out, there was barely any Rey merchandise, even though she was the fucking Luke Skywalker of the movie. And, and, mm. and there's obviously a great deal of backlash with that. So now, now you know, we, got, we got her, and I think after Wonder Woman 2, the success of that movie... They're finally coming around and saying, okay, sure, you know, let's, let's actually let the boys play with the girl characters too. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Donkey Kong Land 3, that, that was, oh, that was a long tangent. Donkey Kong <laughs> Land 3, I told you we would be getting into some, uh, some behind the scenes stuff because it yeah. really does kind of influence, um, the struggles of a character like Dixie Kong, um, Donkey Kong Land 3, I mean, the whole plot of the game was about Donkey and Diddy being colossal assholes towards Dixie and not including her in the quest to find the Lost World, the contest to find the, uh, the what, the third Lost World <laughs> in as many games. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting that how people talk about the plot of this game and the characters are like, there is no Lost World. Yes, there is, apart from the other two. There is a Lost World. The mythical Lost World, not that one, not the other one, this one. <laughs> right, right. You know, you know, the Lost World, not, no, 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 no. You're thinking about that Lost World. No, no, not that Lost World. Yeah, yeah, that Lost World. <laughs> that Lost, the one, the one, <laughs> the one that hasn't been found yet. Yeah. No wonder they did a contest to find it because like <laughs> 95, the Kremlin Lost World was found. 96, Krematoa is found. So 97 rolls in. This, this, I, I assume it's a radio station again. The radio station yeah. said, Hey, you know, th- there's, there's still gonna, there's a third Lost World out there. I bet, I wonder why nobody's found it. Hey, maybe we could have a contest. Yeah. <laughs> radio voice. <laughs> Starring Kitty Kong. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So Donkey and Diddy, you know, they're they're bros. They're uh they're 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 tight, you know, they uh they're uh they're bonded so, so, by, bonded well, what by really happens to them in this plot. They're just not there. They just <laughs> don't find the lost world, they just wander off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 Oh no, they're, they're on Kitty No, they're around um, Funky's place, they're in a K hole as well. <laughs> Yeah, they went to find a lost world, and and Funky <laughs> got some uh, dank new uh, weed, and they just all sat around getting f- blaze out of their mind. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean this is really the game that could be called Dixie Kong's Double Trouble because not only are Donkey and Diddy off-screen antagonists in this game, but you've also got the Kremlins. So actually, mm-hmm. it's Triple Trouble if you if you follow the line of thinking that I do that. K. Rule is still not part of the Kremlin crew at this point. He's kind of a rogue entity. So you've got K. Rule, you've got the Chaos Kremlins, and you've got Donkey and Diddy, uh, among all the other people looking to find this Lost World. For all we know, Banjo was part of this. Conquer. <laughs> uh, maybe this is where Donkey and Diddy first met Conquer, uh, as was alluded to. <laughs> all this awesome Kong stuff racing. is happening off screen <laughs> that we never get to see. <laughs> Mr. Pants is there. Uh <laughs> You and Lelia there. <laughs> Baron von Gull, uh, yeah. Who knows? But, um, yeah, I mean, Donkey and Diddy are, are not seen in this game. Although, in, in a blow for gender equality, the Dixie balloons in this game have been replaced by Diddy balloons. So, 
I, I I liked uh, like I said in the uh, spotlight episode I did with David. I like to think that that just means Diddy is really close nearby. Like he's he's one stage over, so he's really close. Yeah, and he's he's influencing the life balloons because he has a seniority over Dixie as far as video game hero status. Oh, theory, I don't know. Yeah, maybe Diddy's left them behind to yeah. like some kind of taunt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm ahead of you. Right, but yeah, Donkey and Diddy decided to team up to find the Lost World, leave poor Dixie behind. Are they not going to split the prize, the prize winnings w- with her if they find it? I mean, good lord, this is your girlfriend, <laughs> Diddy. Fuck, like, <laughs> grow the fuck up. So, Dixie at this point voluntarily teams with Kitty Kong. She had nobody. This is so sad. She had nobody else to team with. So she was like, "Well, I mean, I guess I'll just team with this." fucking baby again i hope he's not shitting his pants so much this time around he has grown 11 months <laughs> since the last time but he's still a goddamn baby he yeah, he maybe has a greater sense of object permanence but he's still an imbecilic idiot with a big gaping mouth <laughs> flies are probably flying in that mouth all the time he's probably choking on bugs it's i i really feel for dixie kong having to put up with Diddy kong <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah, but of course, and what uh, does she get for all of her troubles? A hiatus for about 10 years. Well, no, she, she got to do a time attack mode and, but, but oh, K yeah. rule, K rule one, K, K rule got the prize wings <laughs> enough to build the mechanical crocodile aisle. So oh. it, 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 I mean, Dixie still came closer than donkey and Diddy did. So she still proved herself the more capable adventurer when, when push comes to shove and she's up <laughs> against donkey and Diddy and, and she's saddled with the useless kitty Kong Dixie Kong proved she can get the job done. Yeah. You know, the only problem is K roll one and, and he, he got enough winnings to build a doomsday weapon to destroy Donkey Kong. Island. <laughs> really? Donkey Kong land three has kind of the darkest ending of the series uh, outside <laughs> of Donkey Kong country two. It? Uh, and and more mm. darker if you don't consider the almost complete annihilation of the Kremlin race to be a bad thing. So, mm. yeah. So, the great Dixie Drought. Yeah, so <laughs> she became a video game hero. She got her own Game Boy game. Things are looking up for Dixie Kong. The N64 is out. Obviously, Rare is going to be doing a 3D platformer for Donkey Kong. Four controller ports, four playable Kongs. Dixie Kong hasn't made. The world is her clam. Her, her clambo. <laughs> uh, and, and it, it, the, the, uh, the pearl is ripe for the taking. And then she just gets completely forgotten about for like <laughs> seven years. Um, wah, wah. what the fuck happened, Joe? I yeah, this, this is weird, the most baffling, infuriating thing, and it look. I like Tiny Kong. I I am not one of these fans who like holds a grudge for too long. I eventually came around to Jungle Beat. I embraced it. Mm-hmm. I I I realized the merits of Nuts and Bolts. Now I think Nuts and Bolts is a fabulous game. Um, so I'm not somebody who who lets the sand and his asshole bother him for too long. Eventually I'm going to turn that sand again into a pearl. Uh, but, <laughs> um, I don't know where I'm going, but, for, but it still bugs me. I, I, I do like tiny Kong and I even like tiny Kong's, uh, puberty. That, that sounds so wrong. I like that tiny Kong was aged up in such a <laughs> hilariously awkward fashion. I, I like tiny hmm. Kong's, current design is what i'm saying but um yeah yeah they made them well it's interesting because am am i right in believing that tiny kong was the character that was designed first and dixie was technically speaking a ripoff of of tiny well how do you how do you reckon that uh i swear that's what i used to say on old dk vine back in the olden days uh, that, I is mean, this that, a Mandela effect type thing? It, yeah, I, I think that's that's from the uh, the Berenst- Berenstein Bears universe, where <laughs> uh, where the the bears in Donkey Kong Country Three were called Berenstein um, <laughs> instead of Bear. <laughs> but uh, oh, okay. no, I, I I think that's that's just um, bullshit. I, I to be fair, I said a lot of bullshit back in the day. 
Uh, bullshit <laughs> right. that's still up on the website. So prove me wrong, people. Find what Joe's talking about. Yeah, someone must remember it. Surely I'm not going crazy. <laughs> no, I, I I think I recall probably speculating at some point that, that Tiny Kong was the original. And I don't know where we came from. I think because it, it probably ties into what we understood to be the, the edict. And this was kind of, um, has been argued about in recent years about whether or not uh, the team behind Donkey Kong 64, which was a lot of the team behind Donkey Kong Country 3, whether or not they had a philosophy. Mm. And I swear I saw this in scribes. People cannot find this, but maybe this is a Mandela effect for me. And I'm from the universe where Lee Loveday said this. Mm. But... They, they said that in Donkey Kong 64, the team wanted to include only characters from the original Donkey Kong Country and yeah. new characters. And, and so... And some, the exception was Wrinkly Kong. Well, well, they made a few exceptions. They, they came around on some DKC2 baddies like uh, Clobber, Kaboom, Shuri, oh, yeah. Puff, Puffed Up... Um, but but by and large they uh they they and then wrinkly kong because they needed a ghost character and they thought wouldn't be funny if we just killed off donkey kong's mom um, yeah but which it, to be fair it, it's hilarious um problems with donkey kong 64 aside i love the fact that they killed wrinkly i love whenever they <laughs> they dramatically impact a character to the point where there's no reversing it. <laughs> Wrinkly Kong yeah. being dead. Tiny Kong going through a growth spurt and becoming taller than Dixie <laughs> Kong. I, I like stuff like that. Stuff that shows that this world yeah. is is constantly going forward and evolving. And these aren't well, static. Conquer's entire personality. Yeah. But you can't come back from that. It's, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's great. It's great. Like Wrinkly Kong can never be nothing but a ghost ever again. Um, yeah. It's... <laughs> which is why Nintendo doesn't use her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I might have thought that, oh, because, because of this edict, maybe Tiny Kong was thought of first and they developed Dixie. It, it was probably bullshit speculation yeah. if I did say it. And there's there's no justification for it. And I think now that okay, uh, Greg enough. Mails and Steve Mails and, and everybody else have been so open about the development of these games on Twitter, we can confidently say, now nah, Dixie came first. Um, oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. I think we're also trying to rationalize why they would have bumped Dixie Kong from Donkey Kong 64, because looking at it back then, and looking at it almost 20 years later, in 2018, I can mm. confidently say, there was no good reason for it. I don't care if you want yeah. to justify, well, they had this character who could, they wanted a character who could shrink and, and that just wouldn't really fit Dixie Kong's uh, MO. Well, you know, mm. flying on a jetpack never fit Diddy Kong before Donkey Kong 64. Uh, yeah, no, that's like his thing that he does all yeah. the time. <laughs> Playing on the bongos never fit Donkey Kong before Donkey Kong 64. Like, you could have made Dixie Kong because because it the, the shrinking was all chemically induced anyway with with Cranky Kong's uh, steroid juice. So it's it's not like Dixie needed to have this weird ability to miniaturize herself like Ant Man or the Wasp mm. or the <laughs> Atom. Uh, it's it's just I mean. Cranky gave Tiny a potion that rewrote her DNA, and with the power of the crystal coconuts, she could shrink. So you could have made Dixie that. Mm. There, there was no reason whatsoever for Dixie Kong to have been replaced, other than they wanted three new Kongs in Donkey Kong 64, and and they yeah. wanted to be the ones to create them. A and this is this is really weird for Rare. This is this is really one of the only instances of rare kind of haviness. Well, another team did this, but we're our own, our own team and we want to go in our own route. This is a very Nintendo way of thinking. And it's mm -hmm. not something you often saw uh, in Rare. Now, granted, a lot of the times in Rare, uh, handheld team aside, you never really saw another team handle... Um, a property that one team got started. Donkey Kong was really the exception to the rule. Uh, 
the you know the the banjo team remained the banjo team until the point where they didn't want to do banjo games anymore and yeah so yeah uh so and we saw like the development for tiny kong we've seen sketches on twitter how you know they originally she didn't start out as dixie's kid's sister she, they they had like different conceptions like a grinder monkey you know the organ grinder monkey um <laughs> uh, not not no one who you know g- goes on you know his phone looking for gay hookups exactly exactly uh <laughs> grinder kong is still uh sadly yet to be introduced in the games uh <laughs> I, I, I don't know what would be a what would be sticking with the the uh, y endings for their first name because i know you like the y endings what would be a good uh twinkie uh, kong what was that Twinkie Kong. Oh, I don't think you get away with that, though. Like, maybe something like, um, Froddy Kong? Uh, I don't know. No, that's, that doesn't Jolly work. Kong. <laughs> Jolly, yeah. Ah, yeah, Jolly Kong. We'll just call all the, all the confirmed gay characters in the DKU Jolly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the bear surname, um, in 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 the the gay community of the rare archipelago no um yeah i like um i i actually like like looking at tiny's development because you had like the uh she, she kind of kind of a cross between an organ like grinder monkey or is one of the symbol monkeys the creepy symbol monkeys um, like the you know you have toys of that are just very disturbing and it should no way be sold to children <laughs> um, so kind of a cross between that. And then I think it de- gradually developed into just basically, uh, a pseudo Dixie clone and, you know, tiny has mm. her merits as a character. And I think it was like a last minute retcon, maybe by Lee Loveday when doing the instruction manual, but it's like, oh yeah, she, she's Dixie's sister that, that, that gives her kind of an in and, and kind of lessens the, like one to one replacement factor of, of Tiny being in this game versus Dixie, mm. and, and then they did the same thing with Chunky. Well, old Chunky's Kitty's brother, you see. So, <laughs> so it doesn't feel as ugly and awkward that we just didn't want to use uh, this beloved character, Dixie, not Kitty. Obviously, <laughs> we didn't want to use this beloved character in uh, Donkey Kong uh, sixty four. Um. But it really bothered me um, back then, and I got over it very quickly to the say to the point where I was saying Donkey Kong 64 is the greatest video game of all time, something I would never <laughs> ever live down ever. Mm. Um, it should have been. It's the sort of thing that I suppose we all came to terms at the time, not realizing just how little Dixie we were going to get in the near future. Yeah, it, it, it seemed like a foregone conclusion that. We have four Kongs. There's four controller ports. Obviously, all four Kongs are going to be playable in Donkey Kong 64. And I think what really kneecapped that was, you know, the the team did try to do, like, multiplayer co-op in in Donkey Kong 64. And they could never get it to work. They they couldn't get a lot of things in that game to work, but that didn't stop them in (laughs) the end. Oh, burn. Leave your (laughs) negative comments in the YouTube comments and joe can read them on the next episode he's on <laughs> <laughs> yes your, your yeah. hatred makes me happy <laughs> <laughs> so many people were were mortified when we did the two-part spotlight episode on dk64 and just basically bashed the game like they're like dk vine is bashing donkey Kong 64 but this is my safe space for donkey Kong. no sorry <laughs> it's Trigger. it's not a great game let we can be honest it's not a great ca- i like a lot of things about it just not the game itself it's a good game it's an entertaining game but it's not a masterpiece it, it's, it's it's a game that entertains once in your life and you never want to play yeah. it again I never want to, like, I, I seriously, Kong's, Kong's I don't think like I could bring well. myself to play Donkey Kong 64 today. It's just, oh, uh, I tried. I tried when it came out in the virtual console, and I just had the, granted, part of that was just the awful control with the, the uh, Wii U gamepad, but, mm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Dix, Dixie should have been in Donkey Kong 64. It, it was unfair to Dixie, it was unfair to the fans, 
there is no reason why they should have replaced her. I've made my peace with it. I like Tiny as a character. I like that they fleshed out Dixie's family to the absurd extent that they did, but it really did Dixie a disservice going forward, especially with what became a pivotal time for the for the franchise, for Rare, for Nintendo, because this was on the cusp of Rare leaving Nintendo. We didn't realize it at the time. We thought there were still many golden years ahead for Rare making Donkey Kong games, uh, but... <laughs> There, there was not. There was going to be one more game. Well, it all looks so. This. It looks so promising with that E3 where all those games were announced before the buyout. Donkey Kong Racing, Diddy Kong Pilot, Coconut Crackers, yeah. Uh, but yeah. we would only get Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Color a year after Donkey Kong 64, and then of course there were Game Boy Advance mm. remakes and Diddy Kong Racing DS. But yeah, that that was going. That was basically the end for Rare and Donkey Kong. And, and that would throw the franchise into a period of uncertainty. So had Dixie been in Donkey Kong 64, it's not like, you know, Lanky and Chunky and Tiny really lived it up, um, you know, living, you know, living life free and easy in the years after DK64, but it would, it would have done a lot more to cement Dixie as this essential part of the franchise at a time when... I think that was was necessary, even if Rare didn't realize it was necessary, even if we didn't realize it was necessary. And because yeah. of that, because she was viewed as replaceable or, or non-essential, I think it may have informed uh, later developers. That's a really good point, yeah. Yeah, late, including Retro initially, that, okay, we don't need Dixie Kong in this game. Before we move on from her absence in DK64, though, it it does beg the question, where was she in that game? Somebody who loves adventure as much as Dixie Kong should have somehow gotten involved in the plot of Donkey Kong 64. The Kremlins are invading your island. There is a mechanical crocodile isle just off the coast with a doomsday weapon pointed directly at your island threatening to blow it up this should have she been wasn't even, she wasn't even captured by the kremlings the no. donkey Kong gets the four kongs that were captured to help the, the five kongs yeah this, this should have been five. christmas uh in november for dixie kong now mm. i i i have fan wanked that dixie wasn't kidnapped by the kremlings because the critters responsible for kidnapping all all five kongs because don't forget donkey kong was also behind bars he just freed himself. Um, mm. the, the, cr- the critters or whatever Kremlins were responsible for this were idiots. They found Tiny mm. Kong and they thought she was Dixie. Uh, likewise, they found Chunky and thought he was Kitty. And mm. they thought Lanky Kong was, I don't know. Lanky just pissed them off because he's a fucking wannabe clown. He's the Dave Coulier. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I don't know if you're familiar with Dave Coulier. Uh, being a Brit, but uh, mm, don't think so. He, he is the hacky comedian uh, who went on to star as Joey on Full House. So uh, mm. he he has a really like hackneyed uh, stand up routine, and that's that's what Lanky Kong reminds me of. Because I imagine Lanky does like <laughs> amateur stand up comedy, and it's just yeah. really terrible. He has like catchphrases, and <laughs> so I think the Kremlins were just like, we fucking hate this guy. Let's put him behind bars too. <laughs> um, but Dixie was excluded and you would think this would would have given her advantage alright I can be like the, the ace in the hole hmm. I can be like the uh, the secret weapon of the Kongs and you now, think someone who you know committed genocide on them twice and then beat the shit out of them another two times after that would be like top of the maybe they were terrified of her I don't know well again I think I think they thought Tiny was her uh, not K. Rule yeah, wouldn't make that sense. mistake, but who, the minions he sent out to to do the deed just just fucked up royally. Um, yeah, of course. Now, so. I, oh, I think Your Excellency, Stern Stone King. Jesus Christ! Um, I'm not gonna have a voice after this. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, like, ultimately, Dixie couldn't get involved in the actual adventure because everything was color-coded to these five Kongs, and there was nothing for her to collect. Uh, 
now why she couldn't just like sneak on sneak behind them and like shoot K. Rule in the goddamn head with a gun, I don't know. It would be fun if we could retcon in this whole other adventure that happened during Donkey Kong 64 to explain where Dixie was. Maybe there was another radio station contest during this time. It was like, <laughs> we found another, well, we, we, we found evidence of another lost world. Let's, <laughs> we're, we're offering all this prize money to find the lost world of Timbers Island. And, and that's where Dixie <laughs> was. Um, yeah. It, if Dixie were to get another solo game, that would be actually a cool place in the timeline to, to slot it in if it doesn't take place in the present day. So uh, get on that, somebody at Nintendo. Uh, Dave Throat, if you're listening, please, please uh, give that request to somebody at Nintendo. Uh, say that uh, all of the fans want it. You heard that on the internet. All right. Mm. So she wasn't in DK64, obviously wasn't in the Game Boy Color version, the, the remake of Donkey Kong Country. She was going to be in Diddy Kong Pilot, the Game Boy Advance uh, sequel to Diddy Kong Racing that was, of course, also going to have Crunch and Redneck Kong for for a brief time before somebody at Rare uh, wrongly said that we can't have Redneck Kong. Redneck Kong is stupid. Let's put Candy Kong in there. Whoever that was at Rare... (laughs) Let's get rid of this one-dimensional joke character and place him with another one-dimensional joke character. Yeah. Wh- whoever at Rare made that call, I'm going to say was not one of the good ones, and I'm glad <laughs> they left. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, they, they no longer... I assume they no longer work for Rare because they would have been fired. They would have been f- shown the door. I see. Let's think. Those who say all the good ones left rare are also the ones that hate ukulele and think it's a huge disappointment. So if they're not at Platonic, where did all the good ones go? They they uh, they ascended to a higher plane uh, of existence. They are now <laughs> spirit energy, perpetually making sequels to Goldeneye. <laughs> they're just they're just going through all the Bond movies now. It's like, oh yeah, they're finally coming out with uh, Never Say Never Again. Uh, for the N64, uh, but you, you you can only play it on on, uh, on the uh, the astral plane, unfortunately. So yeah, so uh, it's there, there. There's a whole game mode where uh, Sean Connery has to pick out the toupee he's wearing. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, she's going to be in Diddy Kong Pilot. Of course, the buyout occurred. And, um, you know, honestly, I'm still not quite clear why they couldn't have gone forward with Diddy Kong Pilot and Coconut Crackers. I think it was like in the early buyout era, they were not sure if they could do new Donkey Kong games. Ultimately, they never did new Donkey Kong games. Uh, the, the one time they, they tried it again with Donkey Kong Country 4, Nintendo rejected the proposal. Um, but they, they thought it's safer to go with their, the characters they own themselves. So coconut crackers, we don't know if Dixie was going to be in coconut crackers or not. I assume she would have been in there somewhere. Um, but coconut crackers became it's Mr. Pants, which I think ultimately was for the better of our fandom. Uh, Diddy Kong pilot became banjo pilot, which I think was for the worse. Uh, Hmm. because I think ultimately banjo pilot has given us very little, where with with at least one version of Diddy Kong Pilot, we would have gotten Redneck Kong. Uh, I think Banjo yeah, Pilot is better new than characters, a, new mythology, yeah. and all that. I think I think Banjo Pilot is better than the version of Diddy Kong Pilot that would have given us the Mario cast. I think that would have been a fucking torpedo to the <laughs> franchise. Uh, so we 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 it would we, have broken down the walls, really, wouldn't it? You buy at Rare's hand too. That would have been like hmm. that would have been like. Sh- Shooting themselves in the foot. That would have been getting you know, like stabbed by your own spouse. It would have been like the O.J. Simpson murders. That's that's <laughs> what it be. That's what the Mario cast build of Diddy Kong Pilot is tantamount to. The slain of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron <laughs> Goldman. Lovely. I'm saying it, and and you know what? Uh, if if they ever do release that version of the game, you can put that on the game box. Uh, so, 
Anyway, yeah, so she, she wasn't going to be in Donkey Kong Racing, though. We, we, we know, unless she was going to be, like, a super secret character, but we've seen the cast photo of Donkey Kong Racing that came out a couple years ago. Lanky was in it. Tiny was in it. Kitty was in it. No fucking Dixie. So uh, she was only going to be in D- Which I kind of like, again, that she was going to be in Diddy Kong Pilot and Tiny was going to be in Donkey Kong Racing. Obviously, Donkey Kong Racing would have been the much more higher-profile game, but I like the mm-hmm. whole, like, Okay, you take this one tiny, I'll take this one. Well, sisters. Sisterly bond. Yeah, well, maybe the games would have combined in some kind of Mario Tennis kind of way, and perhaps you could unlock all the characters in both. (laughs) Yeah. Who am I kidding? (laughs) No. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I I honestly, that the whole uh, GameCube, Game Boy Advance link was was used very, very sparingly. I I think it was... uh, Mario, like, uh, the the Mario Golf and Tennis games, and I, I'm sure Pokemon, uh, then, like, Pokemon Stadium use it for... Was there a Pokemon Stadium for the GameCubes? Pokemon something? Uh, Coliseum. And Coliseum, XD. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, anyway. Um, now, we won't get too much into the evolution of design here. Uh, mm. like, like, the, uh, the, the evolution of what, how the character has appeared. For more on that, please see last season's The Deal of the Art um, that I did with Mm. the expert on the subject, one Cameron Regal. But it is worth pointing out that um, Dixie finally returned in 2004, but it took the remake, the the Game Boy Advance remake of Donkey Kong Country 2 for her to actually come back. So it was was kind of like a wah-wah kind of (laughs) really like... It's been it's been um, seven years, and this is how we get Dixie back with with a mm. remake of her first appearance. But nonetheless, that that was important because <clears throat> it got it brought her back in the fold as far as marketing goes. And this uh, time yeah. around, Nintendo but- didn't hide from Dixie Kong. Dixie was was featured in the commercials alongside Diddy, um, yeah. kind kind of equal billing there. So, uh, and considering that it wasn't. That they dropped the subtitles in the Game Boy Advance remake, so the fact that it wasn't Diddy Diddy's Conquest means that they really did like almost get co-billing in all of the uh, marketing campaigns for for that game. So mm-hmm. she came back with that one, but then later, um, Donkey Konga Two, two thousand five, at least here in the U.S. Uh, and Europe, saw, saw Donkey Kong Donkey Konga Two, a game that I know and loathe. Uh, very well. <laughs> and this was the the true return of Dixie in a new game uh, in the present timeline of the series, then present timeline of the series. And like I said, we're not going to get too much into the design of the character here, but it's worth pointing out that this, at this point, it's it's here where she got five fingers and five toes. I.e., mm. Say it with me, Joe. Prosthetic, Prosthetic golfing, golfing fingers. fingers. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you, again, who are new to the show and are wondering what the hell we're yammering on about, after the buyout, actually before the buyout, because if you look at uh, artwork in Donkey Kong Racing, it, it's mm. clear that Rare was going to give them five fingers and five toes, too. This was probably an edict oh. from Nintendo um, going into the GameCube, Game Boy Advance years that said, hey, we're a Japanese company and you design characters with four fingers. And I know in, <laughs> in, in the West, in Western cartoons and animation, that's perfectly normal. But here in Japan, mm-hmm. we have a little something where the uh, Yakuza cut off <laughs> a finger um, and, and it's considered a social stigma here. And and even even having a character be a cartoon monkey um, in, in a video game with four fingers is considered highly disrespectful. And we 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 we've been polite about it thus far, but we're we're not getting along with you guys as much lately because we've had a management change. So fuck you, Rare. We're probably not even gonna <laughs> uh, try to purchase you when you you ask the, us to buy you. And we're gonna let Bill Gates buy you instead. But we want you to give them five fingers. Five finger discount. So, 
-hmm. Yeah, th this is going to come regardless of whether the buyout happened or not, but it's it's post buyout when it was actually implemented and Diddy got it implemented in his first appearance uh in a Mario game in uh Mario Golf to uh Toadstool Tour. That's what it's called, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I I haven't eaten today because I I've been fasting in preparation for the uh the character witness episode for Dixie Kong, you know, trying to make <laughs> weight, you know, obviously cuz I I weigh myself in uh before every conversation and um so a little lightheaded, so but it was a toadstool tour, yeah. yeah. Um, so Diddy Kong um, had five fingers in that game, and because we can't obviously just say, well, artistic license, you know, whatever, he yeah. always had five fingers, it's just a retcon. We had to come up with an in universe reason why Diddy Kong suddenly had extra digits. And uh, I, re I remember there's like a long, long debate um, between uh, Chad and myself and other DK Viners um, behind the scenes at that time. And mm -hmm. I, we, we brought up stuff like mutations, like maybe he got uh, <laughs> he swam in like a, a, a toxic like a pool, like like seen as seen in Banjo-Tooie uh, when a Trotty the pig grew an extra arm. And I thought that. Th <laughs> I, I vetoed that because I was like, that's one way too dark and weird for a character like Diddy Kong, uh, arguably the second most important character, arguably maybe the most important character in our fandom. And, and what mm. happens if Diddy Kong appears again and he has four fingers at any point? Like we, we then have to explain uh. away like he, he, he cut off the finger and then it grew back. No, that's stupid. <laughs> It's not like Doctor Who where David Tennant got his hand cut off uh, 24 hours after regeneration and it grew back. And then, and then he yeah, had a then, whole meta crisis. In a future episode, that whole hand grew into a second David Tennant. Right, Spoiler right. Again. To give Billy Piper uh, a David Tennant uh, to the bone in, uh, in the parallel universe so she had a happy ending. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, that show's pretty weird when you think about it. Uh, <laughs> when you describe it like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we like, it, it, it's weird if she gets with this character who's actually a centuries old man who can just change his <laughs> face. But if we clone that old man, uh, then it's perfectly okay if she goes to town on him. So let's do that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so ultimately I say, like, look, look, he's in a golfing game. They have like golfing gloves, right? You know, so to improve the grip, uh, you know, on golf clubs. So what if in the Mushroom Kingdom, to to benefit all the the characters in the Mushroom Kingdom who must have uh, a multitude uh, of varying digits, you know, three, four, maybe maybe even like ten fingers on a hand. Who knows what freaks are, are about in the Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom? But what if they have? actual like prosthetic gloves that 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 give you five digits <laughs> on each hand and, and and maybe even you know like uh golfing shoes that are like just like prosthetic like slip-ons that give you like yeah. human proportions because golf is a sport designed for humans and humans usually uh absent any loss of digits or or genetic uh, deformities during birth have five fingers and five toes. So what if, because because Mario brought the sport to the Mushroom mm -hmm. Kingdom, what if they developed prosthetic golfing fingers in the Mushroom Kingdom, available at all the pro shops, all the sporting goods huh. stores in the Mushroom Kingdom, and what if when Diddy Kong was invited by Donkey Kong to play golf in the Toadstool Tour, he purchased prosthetic golfing fingers to give himself a, a better advantage? And he just loved it so much that he decided to wear them full time whenever going about <laughs> on an adventure because it allows him to grip vines better. It allows him to pick up barrels better. Like, so, so well, that's what maybe they just look good. Is. Maybe he's just they, got an eye for fashion. They're stylish. And you know, yeah. yeah. It, look, Diddy Kong always looks up to Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong has always had five fingers. Uh, besides like early artwork or, early renders in Donkey Kong Country where he didn't, but that was rectified by the time the game came out. Actually, his in-game model, if you look very, very closely in DKC, he, he actually has four fingers, but 
but the 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 uh, final renders in the game portrayed are him we gonna explain fun. that no uh, no it's just an optical illusion because you have to <laughs> really really squint to see it and it just it's just the way he's folding his pinky uh in that game yeah that's fine yeah that's fine. whatever uh, it just, uh you know the way the sun's hitting him you know and and, and swamp gas and and uh, mm. uh the heat rising from the ground you know so anyway that's what prosthetic golfing fingers are diddy uh started wearing them full time as um as, as his girlfriend i'm sure dixie was like Hot damn, I love those. They make you a more efficient adventurer, Diddy. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I want them for myself. So Diddy, next time he's in the Mushroom Kingdom, picked her up a pair. And she started wearing them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I, I like that she D- Dixie wasn't even like getting them for golf. She just wanted them for the adventuring aspect. Because um, she liked Diddy's fingers so much. The sh- Okay, shut up, perverts. I I mean, she liked her prosthetic <laughs> golfing fingers so much <laughs> that that you know she wanted to wear them full time as well, but just for thing things like jungle adventure. Um, hmm. Now here here in the U.S., Joe, we, Diddy we have, likes to use them when he's having an adventure in her jungle. Oh, I said shut up, perverts. I was trying to keep it clean <laughs> this week because Nick and I got absolutely filthy last week. Um. <laughs> uh what what's kind of it sort of reminds me this is going to be a weird little tangent but here in the u.s joe we have something um a, a company called patagonia they make um like huh. out, outdoor gear for like hiking camping uh what what have you whitewater rafting whatever and they're really mm-hmm. expensive um so, like, the the jackets in particular are just very, very pricey. So, you know, they're, they're designed for, like, rugged, like, outdoor adventure. But they tend to get worn by yuppies. You know, really, like, upper middle yeah. class people with too much money to spend. And as a result, these yuppies just wear them to, like, Whole Foods or the Mercedes dealership. And they're not actually used for their true purpose, which is, you know... Ru- you know roughing it outdoors yeah. and it always just irritates me to see somebody wearing like a patagonia jacket while they're buying like kale uh at, you know in the organic <laughs> section of the really really expensive grocery store so mm-hmm. with dixie and her prosthetic golfing fingers she's taking something designed for an expensive uh rich person sport golf and using it for rugged outdoor adventure instead so she is the anti-yuppie and that. she's another reason why i that's another reason why i love the character <laughs> yeah that's cool that's like using high heels to get a better balance on the rocks as you climb them yeah exactly exactly except dixie doesn't wear yeah. shoes she no. does paint her toenails <laughs> sometimes but she, she... <laughs> uh that's so a, that's a podcast in itself yes um, now in Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong 2, she was still wearing knee pads. She eventually, uh, jettisons the knee pads with, uh, her, her eventual redesign, um, in the post buyout era, but that would surprisingly not come until, uh, King of Swing, which would be like, uh, two appearances later. Um, mm. but, um, She's in Donkey Konga 2. So the original Donkey Konga, only Donkey and Diddy are quote-unquote playable characters. Uh, but Dixie is quote-unquote playable in this game. And I say that because she's just the sprite used um, for the bongos. She is the the doubles wow. partner um, in uh, – when you, when you play um, like duet mode – by yourself, mm. she is the the computer character. Uh, when you play duet mode, I bl- God, it's been a while since I picked up Donkey Konga, but I think that's the way it goes. It's Diddy when you're actually yeah. playing um, with another human person, and then Dixie is the third player when you're playing with three people. When you're playing with four people, you just see the bongos and you don't see character representations. So I would imagine that. Oh, would that's be... lazy. Yeah, yeah. So I'd imagine that would be <laughs> Cranky, since Cranky is the only other Kong in the game. Um, yeah, it would sure. be Funky in Donkey Konga th- Three, which we never got in the West, but Funky mm. was in that game, J- Japan only. 
But yeah. Dixie, um, so so you know, Donkey. The plot of Donkey Kong was Donkey and Diddy find this magical pair of bongos, which I have fan retconned as an artifact of the Tiki Tac tribe. Well, it makes, makes sense. Um, but they find these, these magical yeah, pair of bongos, idea. and they get really, really into playing the bongos. Like they want to be the best bongo players. Why? Because because they're bored. They're not going on many adventures during this time period. Uh, so in Donkey Kong 2, uh, Dixie, turns out, has been practicing on the bongos. Because, of course, Donkey and Diddy didn't ask Dixie to be part of their bongo playing uh, shenanigans. So Dixie just got a pair of bongos for herself and got better and better and better at the bongos. We already know she plays uh, the guitar, right? So... Um, this is another instrument she has mastered, the bongos. And it turns out Dixie is the best at the bongos. Wh- which Kong is best at the bongos? It is Dixie Kong. Uh, <laughs> so she kind of is like the the annoying, like, you guys suck character. Like, she's always trying to push you to get better. And she actually does serve mm. a, a role in the so-called story of the game. The story of the game is the they go to the... Um, offshore islands the big ape city um, monkey mountains and presumably kremlantis yeah. to play the bongos they go on tour with the bongos and basically panhandle on the street um mm-hmm. and dixie goes with them but she also gives notes to to donkey kong and diddy kong to to help them improve their uh their bongo play like here here's a pointer Here's a here's, here's a couple pointers, and sometimes her notes are just weird, like weird weird things that kind of flesh out the world and universe. So one of, one of the uh, Dixie notes uh, said, "I'm going on a cruise to the faraway lands. Uh, I won't be back for a week." <laughs> and then she comes back and she's like, "I'm back from the faraway lands." And so if you're ever wondering why we we call the um the levels the the fruit kingdoms of jungle beat the faraway lands that is because we have reconciled that with the dixie notes in donkey konga 2 what are the faraway lands well the the world of jungle beat of course (laughs) Um, quite far away from donkey kong island and that's where she was for a long drought (laughs) and also donkey konga 2 came out right after jungle beat so it it makes sense to link the two um, that's also where Dinky Kong comes sure. from. She she talks about her cousin Dinky Kong in the uh, the Dixie notes. So it can't just be a mistranslation. So my 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 argument here is that she has another character. Maybe it's um, the, not not another brother of Chunky and Kitty. This is just another cousin. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe from uh, another side of the family. Some other or, parent. Or, yeah. Yeah. But that, that is who Dinky is. And y- you could even make the argument that, okay, so let's let's say she has this unseen cousin named, named Dinky in the West. We'll just say in Japan that character could still exist, but we'll just call him Kitty. So hmm. depending on which region you're in, the unseen cousin of Kitty Kong is just what 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 kitty kong is called in the other region i like that yeah that's fine. <laughs> all right so she made her debut appearance then in, in short order dixie kong came back with a vengeance she was like boom 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 game appearance after Man. game appearance after game appearance this was a really like we didn't realize how good we had it back then we were still grousing about mm. everything on the forum uh on dk vine and doing news articles bitching about everything uh, oh, yeah. woe is us. Everything is terrible. Even though we're getting regular rare games on the Xbox platform and we're getting <laughs> a string of Donkey Kong games, even if they're not the Donkey Kong games we want, we're still getting them from Payon, Namco. We're getting uh, Jungle Beat. I mean, my God, we had it good and we didn't. But, you know, we, we had <laughs> interviews with the Jungle Beat developers that set us off. We we had this persecution complex that... uh. I mean, we we outgrew it eventually, but... I just remember what bitching about Brawl was like. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, Donkey Kong is not even going to be in Brawl because we're so persecuted as a fan. Oh, Donkey Kong's in Brawl. Well, Diddy Kong is not going to be in Brawl. Oh, well, Diddy oh, Kong's Diddy. in Brawl. But K. Rule's not going to be in Brawl. See, I told you they have it out for us. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm still pissed off about Smash 4, though. That that was some bullshit there. Um, so yeah, Mario agree. Superstar Baseball. Uh, Dixie's first appearance uh, in a cameo game in, in a Mario sports title. The only reason she got in this is because baseball is a game that requires a whole metric shit ton of characters and so yeah let's bring in some other kong characters to fill out the roster uh and since dixie kong was kind of uh rebuilding her prominence at the time thanks to the game boy advance remakes and because of her return appearance in uh konga 2 and her upcoming appearance in the pay on games let's mm-hmm. let's let's use dixie kong so uh I want to read you, uh, there's not much worth noting here. Dixie was playable as a, in this game. She could put her on her team. But let's, let me read you the little bio, in-game bio about Dix, uh, Dixie Kong. Diddy it. Kong's partner and girlfriend. Huh? Huh? Ah. Uh, her, her trademark golden ponytail is familiar to monkey fans everywhere i.e. perverts, uh, Dixie Kong <laughs> is just as adventurous as both Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong. Combining great techniques with fast legs, she is a very dependable player. Player That, that last sentence is about her baseball skills, obviously, but the rest of it is pretty mm-hmm. spot on as far as a uh, character biography. Yeah, It's worth pointing out, too, I also neglected to mention, I just went on a Smash Brothers rant, but... Dixie did get a trophy in Super Smash Brothers Melee during the Great Dixie Drought, while Diddy yep. Kong did not. I, I can't believe I neglected to mention that. But, because um, Diddy Kong was meant to be in the game until quite late into development, I believe. What it, is? It, I, really? Like I, I thought. Yeah, they, Diddy I thought, was meant to be in Melee. I, all right, this might be another Mandela effect. I swear. It I've might be because I, I thought that like there, there, Diddy wasn't even on the table for Melee. Um, and Diddy wasn't even on the table for Smash Brothers until Brawl, and they considered doing a Diddy Dixie tag team in Brawl before ultimately just going with Diddy, which I feel is best because I think it would marginalize both characters if you just mm. paired them as a team. Um, yeah, agreed. And, and then they wouldn't course, have made it into the 3DS one because, as we saw with the Ice Climbers, they couldn't handle two playable characters at once. Right, so it worked out for yeah. the best there. Although, obviously, Dixie deserves to be playable in Smash Brothers. And it's a little ridiculous. As much as we wanted K. Roll in Smash 4, it's a little ridiculous that Dixie wasn't playable as well in Smash 4 because she absolutely deserves it. But, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I remember um, after unlocking the Dixie trophy in um, in Melee, I would just spend... I mean, I want to say <laughs> minutes, but it's probably hours just spinning that trophy around, mm-hmm. imagining, like having Dixie Kong as a playable character in um in a Donkey Kong game for the GameCube. And keep in mind, Melee yeah. came out a year before the buyout, so you know it seemed a lot more feasible at the time that Rare is gonna do a a platformer, probably maybe a, a two and a half D platformer, get back to basics and, and Dixie Kong yeah. is definitely gonna be playable in that game. Oh, oh yeah, it's only, eh? so naive. Only there but, were no buyout. I, I do kind of like that Dixie Kong was a trophy in, in Melee and Diddy was not for whatever reason. I We know yeah. Rare made like more trophies for that game that Nintendo or that the, um, what was it? It was still HAL at the time. Um, uh, they did not use um, for whatever reason, but um, I'm glad that Dixie got in the game. It's a little feather in her beret that she, she got mm-hmm. in... Um, she she got a little one up on uh, Diddy in in at least one game, uh, very prominent game like that. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. Um, she then returned uh, to the Donkey Kong cast in King of Swing, uh, mm-hmm. her first hand drawn appearance, and this was her first appearance uh, in her her more modern design, where her her face more resembles like a, a half of a coconut. A little bit, and she loses and the so knee pack. This is the odd period where um, characters like Diddy and Dixie and the Kremlings were more likely to appear in a Mario game than in a Donkey Kong game. Besides the Payon titles, yeah, um, because obviously, yeah, apart from that, yeah, because yeah. obviously only Donkey Kong and the Banana appeared in Jungle Beat. So, <laughs> yes, uh, this we forget, which gave which which was greatly contributed to our paranoia during this era 
our legendary mm. um frothiness victim of, complex of, <laughs> yeah uh but king of swing she only made a brief appearance um she she was playable in multiplayer uh i believe but she 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 was only like a a brief part of the game but it was still important nonetheless as it showed she was still an important part of the cast and she was she was getting more reintegrated into the Donkey Kong cast so so when the the greater Donkey Kong cast would appear Dixie would be there um Candy mm. Kong was also there Funky Kong uh w- was back in this game Wrinkly Kong w- was there as a spirit so i mean the Payon games featured a a quite extensive cast the most extensive cast we we've ever gotten post rare um mm. so it's not surprising that Dixie is there but when you consider that in King of Swing and Jungle Climber, the DK64 Kongs were not. Kitty Kong was not. Um, it's still great that Dixie was included. And yeah. um, then following that, she was in Mario Hoops 3-on-3. Three three, uh, her second mm-hmm. appearance in a Mario game, and a cameo game. Again, because basketball just requires a whole hell of a lot of characters. Uh, more so than yeah. probably the Mario cast could fill the time unless they wanted to dredge up old super mario brothers 2 characters which they clearly did not so <laughs> sure bring in dixie tragedy Kong. that's Dix- a tragedy Dix- dixie's like weird mid aughts mid noughties uh resurgence it's kind of mm. remarkable when you think about it because uh, she-, she was kind of briefly tepidly hot during this time where she was, she was being utilized mm. by by cameo developers. She was being utilized by Payon. She she even got a little toy, a little tiny figurine, um, in the uh, Super Mario line, um, mm. the the toy line that predated Jack Specific. Um, mm-hmm. she she was available as a little little tiny, like I think it's like an inch and a half to two inch figurine. Um, yep. she's she's all on my desk right now. Not the She's best on mine model. too, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, not the best model, but it was still very nice to have, even if it came packaged in a block, uh, in a box, um, in, in cardstock, emblazoned with uh, mm-hmm. Mario's uh, grinning visage. Um, it was still nice to get <laughs> Dixie Kong in toy form. Um, yeah, because I think like the only Dixie toys, um, like they made like this really like chunk of plastic. Uh, in the for, available in the Nintendo Power Supplies catalog, there might have been a plush mm. around this time as well. But besides that, in Japan they made like f- cartoon figurines. Um, yep. But uh, besides that, like there are no Dixie toys. They never made a Dixie figurine in the 1999 Donkey Kong action figure line. Uh, mm. Again, because of the stigma of well, boys don't want to play with girls. So they had <laughs> Kitty Kong, they had Donkey, they had Diddy, they had Funky, they had Cranky, they had no Dixie, which was just a ridiculous oversight. Um, I think Tiny would have been, I think all three DK64 Kongs would have been included in the second wave before all of their Nintendo lines were discontinued. But um, I said I think there's a prototype of Tiny and, and Lanky and Chunky out there. Oh, as well as a amazing. critter in a minecart. So anyway. Um, yeah. So she was in Mario Hoops 3 on 3. And then Rare got to bring her back in Diddy Kong Racing DS. Um, this is now, the last time Rare have got to do anything with her, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Diddy Kong Racing DS, of course, as opposed to the Game Boy Advance remakes, we at DK Vine, hold to the fact that Diddy Kong Racing DS, I know some people on staff disagree with this, but I definitely think (laughs) that Diddy Kong Racing DS is a separate adventure from Diddy Kong Racing. One, because it has to canonically (laughs) take place after Tiny Kong's growth spurt. And two, you Uh, really do, you really do have to account for the fact that Banjo and Conker aren't there and Dixie and Tiny are. Um, I like that. <laughs> so let's just say, for for argument's sake, that Wizpig's revenge a decade later was just doing the exact same thing once again. The Donkey Kong Land Two effect, everybody. Uh, the the yeah, villains. Yeah, so now he, at least it gives us closure because he did promise he'd be back. <laughs> yeah, well, 
Although there isn't there a to be continued in Diddy Kong Racing DS as well. Like, oh. doesn't it doesn't it just end the same way? Uh, I guess any future re-releases can be a third version. Then that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look. Now that we're a decade after that, hopefully we'll just get a, a remake <laughs> where Wizvik just does the same thing again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, hopefully we'll get succeed, in- Try exactly the same thing again. <laughs> You know, Rare owns WizPig, so technically they could just do whatever the fuck they want with WizPig. You know, we're, we want yeah. TT to be in Sea of Thieves. Hashtag Sea of Thieves. Thieves. WizPig and Sea of Thieves. <laughs> but uh, may, maybe WizPig can go back in time and, and muck about in the golden age of piracy as well. Who knows? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so Diddy Kong Racing DS. Uh, for Banjo is, is busy getting fat during this period. Conquer is bu- busy being a depressed alcoholic king, so they don't participate yeah. in this adventure. But uh, Dixie and Tiny do, and I like this idea that at this point Diddy has matured, matured, mm-hmm. as you would say. Uh, he he has kind of grown up a bit, and he's not so quick to exclude his girlfriend. There is a greater bond between them, a greater love um. as they've as they've aged into teenagers. <laughs> and and young adults even, and mm. so this time around, when Wizpig is is fucking about on Timber's Island, and Timber sends a note of help, help saying, "Hey Diddy, it fucking happened again. Come help us." This time around, <laughs> Diddy doesn't go alone. He decides, mm. "I'm going to bring Dixie. I'm going to bring my soulmate with me, and we're going to." Mm. We're going to knock this intergalactic space genie, space pig genie, on his ass together as a couple. And, and Tiny Kong just tags along and, yeah. you know, it's a general gooseberry. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, maybe Tiny was going through a rough period during this time, literally, <laughs> since she just hit puberty. And, and, and oh. Dixie, I'm sorry, but it was right there. I didn't mean to say it, but it came out of my mouth. And I, and I had, I, I, it was low hanging fruit, um, mm. and so Dixie was like, "I can't leave Tiny behind. She just went through this growth spurt. She's feeling very awkward. She's got acne for the first time. Um, <laughs> she's feeling very, very self conscious. Tiny needs to come along because this was Tiny's first appearance in her, uh, you know, puberty form. So, so mm. T- Tiny came along. So I like that the two characters who came along logically had a reason to come along. Diddy's girlfriend." And Diddy's girlfriend's sister kind of made sense. Like yeah. it, it wasn't like, and here's Lanky Kong for no reason. <laughs> I would have loved that. Though. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, maybe if they, because there was the the uh, opening cut scene in Diddy Kong Racing DS, so maybe th- they could have like had had just Lanky show up, and here's Lanky Kong for no reason. And <laughs> that that would have perfectly justified it, but. Um, hmm. Dixie was then in Jungle Climber, which, again, there's not much to talk about here because it was another small appearance. She was playable in multiplayer. She appeared in cutscenes, and she also uh, hosted some of the secret stages. But, uh, again, shows that uh, maybe her and Diddy were, were on a much much more complex point in their relationship, a much more trusty and less childish version of, of their earlier romance because... She got to go on vacation with with Diddy and Donkey Kong uh, to the Sun Sun Island, uh, along with Funky Candy, Wrinkly, Can- uh, Cranky. Yeah, Wrinkly was there too, even though she was dead, but she appeared as a ghost. <laughs> so it was a very extensive vacation, but I like that Dixie was included, you know? So uh, it's, it's more so than Swanky, Chunky, Kitty, were, and Lanky. Lanky wasn't there. Um, but Lanky was... <laughs> In uh, Barrel Blast, and and Dixie was was finally fully playable again in Barrel Blast, which again Barrel Blast yeah. wasn't great. It was great for no. um, it, it was great. I love for, the character lineup. I just don't like anything else about the game. Barrel Blast is another Donkey Kong sixty four situation where I like everything about the game, but actually playing the game itself. But as far mm. as um, like fan just 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 like stuff for the fans barrel hmm. blast is is almost unparalleled just for the amount of stuff there is for fans to sink their teeth into there there's just so much yeah, going on in that game. a name 
Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, the the fact that they introduced new Kremlings in the game, uh, Kip, Cass, Calypso, like, I, I love that. It's, it's almost like the Redneck Kong effect where they're not as shit characters, purposely shit characters as Redneck Kong, but the fact that they just introduced mm. new characters in a racing game for the hell of it to flesh out the game, yeah. the game's world and lore. Uh, it, it, Paylon really was like terrific. Even when they made a bad game, they were terrific. And I really do appreciate all that Paylon added to the lore. And in, in all Hell three yeah. of Paylon's games, Dixie was there. They never forgot about Dixie Kong. They understood the importance of Dixie Kong, which to me shows that they were genuine Donkey Kong fans through and through. Yeah. Uh, Dixie's last <laughs> appearance then <laughs> Payon was done with Donkey Kong <laughs> at that point so Dixie's last appearance for another six years or so uh, almost as big of a drought mm. as the original Dixie drought came with Mario Super Sluggers the second and last so far baseball game in the uh, Mario baseball series and mm, uh, this time it's like during the Wii during the Wii era, a lot of the party characters just disappeared, like P.T. Piranha and all that. And the yeah. cast of Mario just became princesses and babies. Yeah, it, it, it's like things. every every time like there's a new Mario uh, platformer, it's like the Mario cast just completely resets. It's like, oh, yeah. we're going to introduce all these characters and then forget about the characters before that. Like... Petey Piranha. Mm. For a while there, King Boo was forgotten about. They brought King Boo back. But, uh, yeah. you know, um, Rosalina came into into the, the lineup then with Galaxy. And then they were like, oh, let's put Rosalina and everything. Mm. So, um, but uh, yeah, uh, with, with Super Sluggers, this, this is really like the swan song for all of these Donkey Kong characters appearing in uh, Mario uh, cameo games. And they went out with the bang. Yeah. We got Dixie Kong in it, obviously, but this time Tiny came along as well, uh, along with Funky Kong, who, of course, uh, also appeared in Mario Kart Wii. Uh, K. Rule was there. Oh, my God, K. Rule is there. So weird to so, think about. Have we only seen Tall Puberty, Tiny Kong in two games then? Um, Was it only two games? This in- Seems like it was more, but... No, Tiny Kong she was, was been in Mario uh, Hoops, wasn't she? Tiny Kong was in Barrel Blast. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. Cool. So three games. No, she wasn't in Mario <laughs> Hoops. Oh. Yeah. It's very um, short-lived then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then and then we stopped. Of course, uh, you know, all, all the Kong characters really hit a drought once Retro took over. But we'll get into that here. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, yeah, K. Rule, there were critters in the game. And then whatever the fuck baby Donkey Kong is, he was there as well. <laughs> so quite an extensive lineup there and um yeah. the last time we would see dixie kong for many years and the reason for that was because donkey kong country had a new home and that was with retro studios mm. obviously we love donkey kong country returns um you know it, it the, you, you still see in the greater fan base opinion on the game is, is kind of split on what the game did right and what the game did wrong. But for by and large, we really respect returns. And it brought, I mean, it brought the fan base back together. At, mm. This 2008 was when uh, Sluggers came out. Fans started to drift away at this point. It had been years since the Donkey Kong Country game. The Payon games were, were fantastic mm. fan service. But they they were basically side games without a main mm. game to anchor them to. Jungle Beat, of course, yeah. was was divisive and and weirdly insulting to Donkey Kong fans. So it was a really bad way to try to sell a Donkey Kong game, especially the first Donkey Kong platformer after Rare. Um, and then so and of course you had the Rare remakes, which the the fans loved, but it wasn't enough to really keep the 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 flame um roaring. It, it kept the embers burning, but there, there was no, um, mm-hmm. there's no really heat giving, you know, um, being, uh, let off from, from the fire. So returns, um, came in 2010 and unfortunately retro had a very, 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 <laughs> 
how how do you want to phrase it, Joe? Um, a very small lineup of characters, I guess. Yeah, unnecessarily sparse. They yeah. very economical way of going about the cast, and you know. We, we can argue and read the tea leaves about why this was the case. They asked Miyamoto mm. directly, which characters do you think we, we should bring back? And he said, oh, definitely Cranky Kong. Definitely Cranky Kong. So they brought back Cranky <laughs> Kong. And they mm. didn't really bring back anybody else but Diddy and Rambi and, and Squawks in, in a minor role. Um, yeah. But... um. So, so for a time we said, well, maybe they just misinterpreted what Miyamoto said, but that's really like, that would be really like stupid if they just was like, well, we thought you said only bring back Cranky Kong. Silly us. Yeah. Um, what, what's more plausible, I think, especially with what's come to light, I think when, when you look at the relationship between Retro and Tanabi, um, it seems to have deteriorated a bit um, because Tanabi seems to have had a falling out with Retro a little bit. Um, oh, really? He seems to have, have parted ways with Retro or Retro has kind of pushed him away. And and a part of me wonders, and part of not just me, but but the larger fan base wonders um, if Tanabi had a an issue with the rare characters for whatever reason, whether he just hates the rare characters or whether it's kind of a, a a pride thing. Like, well, those aren't our characters. We didn't develop them. So we Mm. shouldn't use them. We should only use the characters that are absolutely necessary to make a Donkey Kong country game, Donkey Kong country. Therefore, Diddy, um, one animal buddy that you can ride. And because Miyamoto likes him so much, Cranky Kong, um, we don't know, but, Returns had a absurdly sparse cast, and to me, it, it feels like they brought back the characters that were necessary. You know, they didn't just have other characters just sitting around. Like they, I, I think first and foremost, they thought, "What do we need for the gameplay? Like, we need an item shop. We need two playable characters. We need, you know." I like to think that the increased number of characters was. Maybe because they simply didn't realize how much we, the fans, cared about the supporting cast. Maybe they thought they were just disposable, and they didn't realize until Tropical Freeze that, yes, we would like to see more of the Kong family return. I don't, I, you know, part of me doesn't, part of me thinks that Retro didn't have a good handle on what Donkey Kong Country fans wanted until mm. after they sort of paying attention to Donkey Kong Country fans with returns release i think by yeah. the point they were aware of what dunk on country fans looked for um returns was way too f- um far in development and they couldn't make compromises with what tanabi was pushing for what miyamoto was pushing for what the whole mm. nintendo was pushing for and and what they wanted and i think what you saw with tropical freeze was an attempt to find a middle ground where we're going to try to please yeah. everybody, especially the country fans who, you know, the, the overwhelmingly, we embraced returns. We were just happy mm. to have country back. And we thought, yeah. by and large, Retro did right by the series, even if they missed the mark with characters, which had always been a hallmark of what Rare utilized and with what uh, Payon utilized. And... um. You, you look at what they did with Tropical Freeze, which uh, was more than three years later, early 2014, February 2014. Uh, we've we've passed the, the four-year mark now with Tropical Freeze's release. Um, but what we saw with Tropical Freeze was, okay, we're going to bring in more characters. Uh, we're going to bring back Dixie Kong because fans really like Dixie Kong. It's one thing we've learned about Donkey Kong Country fans is... They really want Dixie to be playable again. So we're going to go out of our way to not only make Dixie playable again, but we're going to make Dixie... We're going to announce Dixie Kong on the day of uh, the announcement. Yeah. We're going to include her as part of the initial package. And uh, as, uh, as Iwata said... And she said, stole the show. <laughs> well, initially, that was the biggest thing. As Iwata said, yeah. and Dixie Kong is back as a playable character. <laughs> and that was just like... 
fuck yeah like everybody was on the fence yeah. they're like well this, this is a new donkey kong game but it, it looks like they haven't really course corrected anything that we had issues with from from returns and, and then there was dixie and i was like fuck yeah dixie um, and then they did it again when they said david wise <laughs> well yeah and then later on like retro was like we're gonna bring in david wise because the fans really like david wise and we we can bring in david wise so why don't we fucking bring in david wise and okay nin- yeah nintendo is not letting us use the kremlins maybe tanami is not letting us use the kremlins or maybe retro themselves said we feel like we didn't do a good enough job creating genuine donkey kong villains the first time around with the tiki tech tribe let, let, let us have a mulligan let us try again and do something more in a spirit of what you're looking for we want to create our own villains yeah. but we I want think they them definitely to be did, more delivered in that respect when you look at what the snowmans were no they were not the kremlins and the fans still mm. want the kremlins back the very vocal uh kremlin campaigners really sprung up post tropical freeze um but um you know at this time they look at what the snowmans were they were uh, a very clear attempt at replicating what made the Kremlins work. And I think they they did a good job with the snowmans. They're not as magical as the Kremlins, but they are very uh, much more interesting as antagonists, much more lovable and, and fun and full bristling with personality. So, um, Mm. and just this little things like fixing the map screen, like having it be a less super Mario style map screen, having the characters, on the maps you're like they actually like you can tell they listen to criticism on dk vine on other fan communities dkc atlas probably they actually listened to criticism and said these are the things we can fix that nintendo will probably let us fix so um (laughs) and, and of course to bring it back around to dixie dixie was a big part of that so dixie was fully playable uh, in a platformer, in a new platformer, for the mm. first time since 1997, 17. Oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> little Jesus. over, little over 16 years. Um, because late, late 97 compared to early uh, 2014. But um, yeah, my God. But Dixie was back. Sh- sh- she um, she had a bubble. A gumball gun, a bubble gum gun to mimic mm. uh, Diddy's peanut pop guns. And I love that they utilized her gum chewing habit from Donkey Kong Country <laughs> uh, game, from her idol animations, and said, yeah. okay, she's chewing gumballs. What if she has an entire a g- gun that fires them? And she could shoot them in her mouth, but she could also shoot them at baddies. Mm. They also changed and this up- new design for Dixie as well was absolutely adorable. I mean, she's always been adorable, but I just really loved how expressive she was in Tropical Freeze. <laughs> yes, yes. They uh, they really, like, they nailed Dixie's personality in Tropical yeah. Freeze. Even in the opening cutscene where the other Kongs are, like, looking at the snowmats approaching. And, like, they, they have, like, worried expressions on her face. Dixie is smiling. She's, like, she looks giddy. She's, like, oh, <laughs> shit is about to go down. I'm going to be part of it. Fuck <laughs> yes. We're, like, the island's going to get frozen and we're going to get blown, like, <laughs> hundreds of miles away. This is going to make my year. Mm. I, that, I mean, it, it's, it's terrific shit. They, they, there is nothing wrong with Dixie's portrayal in Tropical Freeze. Retro, I think more so than any other character, they got Dixie like dead on. Like Cranky, Cranky's kind of hit or miss sometimes. He's yeah. not really cranky in Tropical Freeze. The crankiest he gets is in Idol Animation, where he reads a newspaper as kind of a passive aggressive. I'm too yeah. old for this fucking shit. And they got returns though, didn't they? Yeah, Cr- Cranky was Cranky was as slightly bitchy in return. Not as bitchy as he is in Rare's mm. games. Like Cranky isn't slagging off the game itself, saying the people who made this game are probably inebriated <laughs> drunkards who who <laughs> deserve like the harshest penalties up and, up to and including the uh, lethal injection. Uh, yeah. Rare, Rare was pretty hard on themselves, and it's a verbatim never... quote from the manual there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Retro never got 
um, to that level of self-deprecation uh, via Cranky. But Cranky was still um, a miserable old cunt in, in return. <laughs> <laughs> um, Excellent. So anyway, yeah, Nixie was perfect, and she they changed her moves a little bit. She no longer had the helicopter waft. Now she had this this little maneuver where she she could spin her her ponytail and kind of jut up in the air before like. Hmm. So it was kind which of meant, just like, which meant she was still the most able character in the air and still possibly the easiest one to play as. Yes, so she was the best character in Tropical Freeze. The 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 character yeah. who more times than not you wanted to have on Donkey Kong's back or in the uh, the mode uh, post secret seclusion just uh, playing as by yourself. There were moments in the game specifically designed for Diddy and Cranky where like okay Diddy's probably the best one here. Okay, Cranky's definitely mm-hmm. the best one. Here. But they were honestly few and far between. It's one of the biggest yeah. design flaws of Tropical Freeze where. For eighty percent of the game, eighty five percent of the game, maybe. If yeah, you even Dixie, like the underwater move she has is more useful than the ones the other characters have, and it's required to get one hundred percent completion. Yeah, yeah, Dixie is eighty for eighty five percent of the time the character you you want to play as, and yeah, you could say yeah if you play as Cranky, there it opens up all this nuance for experienced players, and that is true, but. Honestly, Dixie's still the most fun to play as. And um, now I, I, I wonder like why she doesn't do her traditional helicopter waft anymore. The only thing I think of is maybe, you know, you get older, you know, your your hair changes. Maybe it's more brittle after years mm-hmm. of using the conditioner she uses um, to make it like yeah. really absurdly rigid. Maybe she's not cap- capable of the helicopter waft. Maybe she is damaged her hair and that's why she can only do what she can mm. do in tropical freeze yeah i mean like i'm unable to helicopter as well as i could in the olden days thanks due to damage down there <laughs> 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 yeah that's i i warned you about using grinder in indiscriminately <laughs> joe i warned you like not everybody on that service is uh is uh, okay um the only th- other thing I can think of about Dixie uh, in Tropical Freeze that's worth noting is she grooms Donkey Kong in the idle animation, which uh, uh-huh. it's it's the only instance I think we've seen of any of the Kongs being absurdly less than human, where they're out and out eating bugs off each other. It's uh, yeah. it's 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 kind of gross, but I like that there's this little indication that. These aren't just humans in in monkey suits. These are actual mm. monkeys who sometimes do monkey things, like <laughs> eating the the vermin that crawl on each other. And uh, it makes you really wonder what the foreplay between her and Diddy is like, if that's the case. <laughs> so we've got a couple calls to take from self-professed uh, Dixie fanatics. And then we will wrap up the character witness of Dixie Kong with... Uh, and then I, I can think, go to bed. <laughs> well, you can go to bed, but I know you, Joe, and I know you're going to be up long after we're done, tossing and turning, thinking, mm. I should have mentioned this about Diddy. Dixie. I should have said this about Dixie. <laughs> I missed my chance yeah. to, to wax poetic about Dixie uh, on this subject. So... This episode, you're, you're going to be free from it in just a few minutes, but it's going to haunt you for the next mm. 24 hours. All right, let's take the first call. And actually, then the second call, because it's the, it's the same person. Hey, y'all, this is uh, Swanky Mamanky, and I'm here to talk about uh, my favorite video game. My favorite, yeah, fuck that, not female, not just female. My favorite video game character of all time, Dixie Kong. See, now, when I was growing up, there was always a bunch of strong women in my life. But, you know, real and fictional. But a bunch of kids, you know, they had Wonder Woman or Sailor Moon or whatever. But for me, it was Princess Leia and Dixie Kong. Because in the first game, you know, you had Candy who, you know, never really disturbed me like some people. But she was always kind of off-putting. 
So when the second one came out, you know, it just surprised me how awesome Dixie was because other than uh, other than Princess Toadstool in the Super Mario Bros. 2, I don't think I'd played a female character in a video game before. So that was just totally new for me. And, I mean, it wasn't really something that even popped out that I thought about, and I think that really speaks to how good of a character she is. Because she's a total fucking badass, and she can shred like a motherfucker, and, you know. And I, uh, personally, DKC2 and DK64, and, you know, that's why he's all rocking out in that game. That's my head cannon. Uh, I wonder if, if the series had gone on through the early 2000s, would, would Diddy have just pulled out his boombox, and they would have done this whole shitty new metal thing? Like Donkey Kong Country Limp Biscuit or whatever? That's probably a good thing we skipped those years then. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you just don't need to take it to the fridge. But, you know, DKC3, that was a constant source of joy for me growing up. I never personally owned it, but there was this movie gallery just right down the block from my house, and I don't think anyone else ever got to rent that copy but me. Like, I played it all the time. And uh, many years later, I guess about... 20 years later, the movie gallery closed down and had this clearance sale. And lo and behold, there was this old Scotch tape copy of DKC3, so I, I did finally get my hands on it permanently. So that game means a lot to me, and just it stands on its own so much to me because it's got its own distinct flavor. You know, DKC2, you know, every, most everyone agrees that it's a better game. It's like a, you know, leaner, more honed version of the first one. But, you know, the play style, how it's slower, it's more contemplative and all that. And the third one, uh, shit, I just, I love that game. Shit, I knew I was rambling, but I didn't know y'all cut me off before I got back to my damn point. <laughs> Okay, anyway, getting around to my actual point is the themes in that game uh, kind of inform me of her personality. Uh, you know, she wears that college girl hipster beret like my mama used to wear. But um, she always looked really excited to get through the level. You know, Diddy had that victory rap. But, you know, when Dixie pulled out her guitar and played that little riff, it, it just made me excited to go to the next level. And, you know, it looked like she was just ready to you know, get out there and just pump on with this adventure, you know. And that was always badass to me. And then, you know, like I said about the hipster bray, she's obviously very environmentalist, or at least the game is, and like I said to me, that informs her personality. You know, in the 90s, everything was anti-industrialist, and you had Captain Planet and shit. So even though it wasn't, you know, an end boss at all, you just... Seeing her and Kitty take down Mechanos was just a real memorable part of my childhood, and it felt really good seeing the actual results from that. So, in summation, I think Dixie Kong is smart and dedicated, friendly, a badass, protective. Um, obviously, she already knows Funky, so she's got to be pretty chill. And that kind of goes with her nonchalantly blowing bubbles all the time. Speaking of which, how does she get more gum? That's my question. Does she get it? Is there is it one of them crash planes, or is it an import from Crazy Kremlin? Or does she not get more gum? Like, has she been chewing that one piece the entire time? Because that's nasty. And that's all I have to say. Uh, I apologize for the long two messages, but I'm swanky, my manky, y'all, and have a great fucking podcast or whatever. Oh, thank you for the call, Swanky Mamanky. <laughs> that was quite sweet. <laughs> Always great to hear from you, and thank you so much for what you said about Dixie Kong. You know, I I, I completely agree with everything you said. Oh, me um, too. Really, I mean, I yeah, it, it is it is my head canon too that Diddy um, learned the guitar from Dixie. Um, so I, I like that you brought that up. Um, I don't think new metal. NU metal for those of you who aren't familiar with the genre. I, I, I really don't <laughs> think it ever caught on on Donkey Kong Island. At least I would hope not. 
Um, it's bad enough that Good Charlotte and Smash Mouth were as popular as they were uh, circa 2005. So uh, uh, I, I think we can do without uh, the, the whole uh, rap rock uh, new metal genres. Um, but um, yeah, I love what he said about like strong female characters. And that's, I mean, that is, that is another reason why I just love Dixie. She, that, I mean, that is just when you, when you distill Dixie to a core, she is, she is basically as interesting a character as Diddy Kong. Um, and, and, and really like, I love the fact that you can have three strong protagonists of the Donkey Kong series where you can have a game being headlined by Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, or Dixie Kong, and either mm. one would work and be perfectly valid. And, and really, you don't have that kind of versatility with with other Nintendo series. I mean, honestly, any video <laughs> game series, unless like, I mean, you got like Grand Theft Auto where they switch out the protagonist with every game, but have they, they've never even had a, a female protagonist in that series um awesome. <laughs> yeah i mean i i would i would like to go on a complete like psycho psychopathic rampage as a as a <laughs> lady uh, sure um yeah but I know um, several ladies who have done such a thing <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it it's um you you brought up uh her her hippie beret um yeah, I, I guess D- Dixie is, is has a bit of a, a hippie quality to her. Although I associate that more with with Tiny Kong, since Tiny Kong's actually mm. dressed like a, a flower child back in <laughs> like the the late nineties, uh, like sixties and the seventies, uh, like fashion revival. Um, but uh, to your, I, I think, it's my personal head canon now that she has been chewing that same piece of gum since 1995. That's fine. <laughs> well, um, see, I, I think I think the Kongs make like their own like gum. I think that's a product they make. They don't. They make more than just barrels. Mm. Obviously, like the chewing gum, <laughs> the, the the stuff in chewing gum comes from like the rainforest. So I imagine they yeah. they would find it pl- plenty uh, somewhere on the rare archipelago, if not Donkey Kong Island. Um, now the question I have though, is where does she keep the gum on her person during the adventures? <laughs> Cause the Kongs, at least the, the three, um, main Kongs do not wear pants. They don't hmm. wear pants. They, uh, they don't have any pockets that we're aware of. So where does Dixie keep her gum? Where does she keep her Mountain Dew? The, uh... <laughs> Because I I've always said that she's drinking Mountain Dew uh, in Donkey Kong Country too. Uh, yeah. It just 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 vaguely. I, I know people have argued like, oh, it's it's juice, it's a juice box, and I'm like, no, it's a mm. bottle, and I don't know. I still like say juice box to me. Okay, <laughs> fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> I always like to think she was drinking Mountain Dew, but where does she keep it on herself? Does she she must have like pockets on her shirt somewhere? Um, that we just can't see because they're it just yeah. folded weird. That's why she that's why she keeps a tail as well. <laughs> Tucked into the same for the pocket. end of the show, Joe. <gasps> oh, sorry, I'm just getting a bit anyway, patient. That's all. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, thank you for the call, uh, Swanky, my manky. It was great to hear from you again, and mm-hmm. uh, I concur with everything you said about Dixie. Um, as do I. Right. We have we have another caller, and then Joe will will get to the tail debate, and then I'll let you go to bed. <laughs> All right, cool. Cool. All right. Hi, Heil and Joe. Fourth time caller here. Dixie Kong is really someone special. She's the first expansion of the main playable DK crew post to DKC. It's extremely ballsy not to have DK as a playable character in Diddy's Conquest and instead have a girl and an awesome girl, one that is much more fun to play as than Diddy. Helicopter hair is the greatest thing ever. In the 90s, and still somewhat in a post-Wonder Woman movie world, people still think that boys can't relate to girl characters, which is so fucking stupid. As a huge fan of Dixie Kong and Pipsy Mouse, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Ripley from Alien, and all the new and old badass women of Star Wars, I can tell you gender 
It's just a tiny factor in my relation to a character. I even assumed Dixie was a dead ringer for Smash Brothers, but I'm also the person that thought we might get Banjo Kazooie in the original Smash before it came out. I still remember seeing the first screenshots of Super Smash Brothers for the N64 on a Japanese Pokemon site. That was the first place I saw Peekaboo, aka Merrill Lynch. Back to Dixie. Her name is a little misplaced, as she isn't from the American South like Redneck Kong is. At the end of the day, one of the boldest moves that Rare made with the original DKC trilogy was letting Diddy and Dixie be the main characters of the sequels. I mean, imagine if just Luigi was playable in Super Smash Bros. Doki Doki Panic, and then imagine if just Toad was playable with Luigi as the secondary character in Super Mario Bros. 3. This is all a dream. So, I love Dixie, and not in a bestiality type of way. Looks up bestiality. Oh, I thought that was a Mortal Kombat reference, bestiality, like a fatality. I guess my love for Dixie's like, half bestiality. <laughs> well, thank you for the call. Uh, fourth time caller who refuses oh. to say their name. Um, all right, so... A little, little bit to uh, un- unpack there, but uh, I like how this episode is basically just a bunch of dudes sitting around <laughs> saying how much they admire Dixie Kong <laughs> and how much they, they like strong uh, female protagonist and, and how it's mm. bullshit that, that corporations and the entertainment industry have deprived them from us for so long. Um, yeah. it's, it's nice. To, it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear that uh, our listeners feel the same way that we do. And uh, even though we we don't have any um any women calling into the show this week, <laughs> um, I, I was hoping for for some female perspective here on, on Dixie Kong. But I like that we're we're all a bunch of dudes who uh who who who, who can at least find something to relate to with Dixie Kong, and yeah. uh, makes makes me feel better. About our gender, Joe, and and, and <laughs> moving forward into the future, um, I, I feel like all we need to do to ask ourselves, um, how can I be a better man, is look towards Dixie, and <laughs> and she'll show you the way. And, and I feel like that, that's good advice for politicians, for for the entertainment industry, <laughs> in in a post. Uh, Harvey uh, Weinstein world. I I feel like I feel like Dixie Kong needs to be the totem for female empowerment. Now, as a man, I can't say what should be the totem for female empowerment because that's not my mm. place to say. But I learned that from Dixie Kong. So, um, <laughs> thank you for the call, fourth time caller. Um, and by the way, yes, I'm pretty sure we've made the bestiality as a Mortal Kombat. A finishing move joke <laughs> in the past. How could we have not? Um, it's unless been two hundred and fifty or so episodes. Unless that's just the Mandela <laughs> effect talking, and uh, mm. there's no actual episodes of us making that joke, except in the universe where I'm from, where I made that joke all the time. So, um, two questions I have, Joe. Yep. One, you, you hear a lot about female characters, especially strong capable female characters who are better at things than the male protagonist. Dixie yeah. is better, a better adventurer than they are. Um, she's better at the bongos than they are. She's more musically yeah. adept. She's better. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, Dixie um. is better at a lot of things. You've heard of the term Mary Sue before, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, it, the, is Dixie a Mary Sue? No, because she's not got as good. Um, her stats, her jumping ability, and her running and carrying barrels in DKC two are not as good as Diddy's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically, she's yeah. Good. <laughs> technically, if you want to actually get technical and say this is where Dixie is not as good of a playable <laughs> character as Diddy calling, they're like, okay, no, she's not a Mary Sue. Yeah, the, the term Mary Sue is, is hilariously overused. Like, yes. Yeah. The, the, originally, like the the term Mary Sue was either a self insert character in fan fiction, or mm. or just somebody who is like writing their own ideal like 
again, ideal, ideal, like a love interest if it was a dude or or whatever writing the fan fiction. But it, it basically, like the the term has been so liberally misused over the years that now <laughs> any like strong, capable female character is considered a Mary Sue. I you saw it a lot with. Yeah. Uh, ray in uh the new star wars movies oh she's a mary sue because she can fly the millennium falcon and she she hasn't received any training but she can lightsaber fight with a guy who's been <laughs> shot by a wookie bowcaster and is bleeding profusely and just spoilers <laughs> murdered his father um Ugh. sorry i sorry i spoiled it for you joe um <laughs> but i mean really i i, I think it's it's a silly argument to be made Obviously, uh, Ray from Star Wars has flaws. Dixie has her own flaws. I I think yeah. even even looking aside from like where she lacks compared to Diddy Kong or Cranky Kong in, in playable stats, she's also I think that a Kong more likely to succumb to hubris, where she, her she's more reckless. <laughs> um, she did accidentally commit genocide along with Diddy Kong. I would imagine <laughs> so her is hubris. That played a part in that. I don't think many Mary Sues accidentally obliterated an entire nation state. So, uh, no, Dixie's not a Mary Sue. She has her mm. faults like the rest of us. And, uh, she's just better at some things. And you know what? You know what, gents? You know what, dudes? You know what, bros? Fellow <laughs> men? Women are better at some things than we are. We just have to accept it, embrace it, and you know what? Look for the fellow Dixie Kongs in your life. Maybe that will help make that bitter pill go down more smoothly. Don't think of them as, as a threat to your masculinity or, or to your place in, in the, the societal standings. Think of them as just a Dixie Kong in your life. Yeah. It's suddenly awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my advice for you. So... Joe, does Dixie Kong have a tail or doesn't she have a tail? So this, this, is, this is the heated argument that has ripped DK Vine apart for almost oh. 20 years. Dixie Kong is a monkey, just like Diddy Kong. They have virtually identical designs. But well, wait a second, Diddy Kong has a tail. I don't see a tail on Dixie Kong. Well, well what? Um, she, she had it amputated at birth. But when she goes to the Mushroom Kingdom, she had uh, a prosthetic golfing tail attached but she doesn't like it and she's accidentally stuck it on she can't remove it so she tucks it up into the back of her shirt now everyone's right good that's such frothing bullshit joe <laughs> to complain to joe and about how wrong he is about <laughs> dixie kong's tail please comment in the youtube comments and he'll read it on his next appearance this has been a File 2 production. Kiriko. Now, it's going to be really hard to do a character witness Kitty Kong because he's only made two fucking appearances. But I think it would be really fun if... What if we wore diapers on the Kitty Kong character witness? Like, and, and we, like, shit our pants during it. 